Hogs in white jersey, silver pants, and red hats. Missouri all in gold. Here's Tucker McCann to kick it away and get this game started. It's going to be taken by Hardman on the goal line near hash mark. Straight up the gut. 20, 25, 30. Cuts to the hash. Breaks a tackle. Falls forward to the 35-yard line. Miko Hardman with a burst to get it started for the Dogs. A 35-yard kickoff return, and the Dogs will start. They'll bring the ball back to the 34. That's where the Dogs will start this ball game. SEC Eastern Division match. Matchup, and we are watching it from the Piedmont Healthcare booth here at Faroe Field. Georgia on offense, Missouri on defense. The Tigers right now rated as the number one rushing defense in the Southeastern Conference, allowing just 74 yards per ball game. My bet is that doesn't stand after today. Swift in the backfield. Fromm will drop back into the shotgun. Three receivers right, one to the left. Will throw on the first play. Caught by Tyler Simmons at the numbers on the near side. Tackled right around the 40 or the 41. One yard line. That's going to be a gain of seven on first down. It'll be second down and three. Quick hitch just to the outside there. Missouri went single safety. They brought the Sam linebacker over the slot. That quick pass. No need to sign adjust that. You just catch the football and go. We had off coverage. Nice throw and catch. Adam Sparks made the tackle and Andrew Thomas is in the ball game starting the game at left tackle for the Bulldogs. That's a bit of a switch that we were told earlier. Handoff from going to Swift. They run right, wide to the right on a sweep by DeAndre Swift. He angles towards the Georgia sideline and will be brought down at the 50-yard line. That's a scan of energy first down at the 50, a gain of nine. And the Dogs already at midfield in just a couple of plays. Huge push there by Ben Cleveland, Isaiah Wilson, Isaac Nada, Andrew Thomas. We actually went overload there and, and put Andrew Thomas on left tackle on the right side of the line. So got big on big and just went after it. You got Trey Blunt as a receiver to the right, two on the left. One of them's Kiaris Jackson. Swift gets the handoff. He runs straight, tries to bounce out left. He's pursued by the strong safety Cam Hilton, and he'll go nowhere. Tackled actually for a loss back at the Georgia 49-yard line as Swift tried to move laterally to his left, and there was no room there. Number seven in gold came up to make the tackle. Well, we just tried to go off tackle that time behind Andrew Thomas in his normal position. Could never gain the edge. And instead of just getting north and south, Swift there tried to bounce that one outside and just couldn't find it. Georgia rotating players in this first series rapidly. Ridley and Hardman back in as receivers to the right, Simmons to the left, and James Cook in the backfield. Out of the shotgun to Fromm. He'll throw it to Cook right flat. A lob to the right, caught on the 45 to the 50, to the 45 to the 40, and angles towards the first down marker on the far side of the field. And let's see, they may spot him a little bit short of the first down ball just before the Missouri 40-yard line. Trey Williams, a defensive end, and Demarcus Acey, the cornerback, forcing Cook out out of bounds just shy of the first down it's going to be third and less than a yard to go for the dogs just outside the tigers 40 yard line great play call there by the dogs missouri brought the middle linebacker and the strong side linebacker and james cook instead of staying in a projection had a free release on that one so he was the hot receiver we saw it immediately, got the football out to the flat where we had plenty of green grass to run. Motion man handoff to Holyfield. Straight ahead dive play for the first down. He gets it. About a yard, yard and a half. Holyfield hitting the hole at right guard in the center. And that's going to be another scan of energy first down at the Tiger 39-yard line. When you talk about the small things that make a difference, and we're just going through Jake Fromm's numbers and what makes him so efficient is just his football IQ and his knowledge. You get a blitz like, like Missouri just brought, knowing exactly where you have to go with the football and getting it out on time creates big plays. Fromm with a play fake in the pocket. Wants to go deep towards the end zone. There's Hardman. Can't get to it just out of his reach. He stuck his left hand out in the air, tried to get it in the Missouri end zone, and it was just overthrown. Miko Hardman had coverage by Cam Hilton. The throw was good, but it was just a tad bit long in the end zone. A lot of hand fighting there between Hardman and, and, and Hilton. It looked like Miko almost got tied up a little bit as he was trying to gain some separation and never really located the foot Football, but well-thrown football went to the right spot. Looked catchable, but just out of the reach as Hardman tried to get the left hand up there for it. 
Second down and 10 for the Dogs from the Missouri 39. Hand off to Holyfield. Runs to the left. Tries to get to the corner at the numbers. And there's not a lot of space there. He tried to cut inside around the 39. Tackled by the middle linebacker, Cale Garrett, in front of the Missouri bench. The gain is next to nothing. It's third down and nine yards to go for the Dogs. Just across the Missouri 39-yard line. Georgia moving. Like Missouri was going to go single safety. Ended up going cover two. Brought a, brought a uh, blitzing line backer as well so zone blitz look and that little inside choose route as Miko Harbin was drifting back out to the flat you want to throw that football against cover three or where you've got a sifting corner didn't happen there that corner squeezed on him then Jake Fromm threw him right into the coverage pretty well thrown football and McCall had it for a second and then they just took it away from us. Yeah, Holmes just stole it right out of his arms and landed on the ground with it. So here's Missouri now. Locke with a quick throw to the near side. Sliding catch is made at the 34-and-a-half by the tight end, Kendall Blanton. Big 6'6", senior tight end, 265, sliding baseball style towards the Missouri sideline at the 34-yard line. The gain is five, and it'll be second down and five for Missouri. First touch on offense for the Tigers. They slide a man in motion to the near side. That's one of the tight ends. Lock in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Stands on his 26. He bounces. He throws. He's got a man open far side of the field. That is Tyler Beatty. Breaks the tackle. Stays in bounds. Far sideline. No, they're going to bring it back at the 41. He rambles into the end zone, but the official is marking it out of bounds on the Georgia sideline right around the 41-yard line of the Bulldogs. So that play coming back there, it is not a touchdown. Well, that one I'm sure is, is going to be reviewed, or I would imagine was going to be reviewed. We had a blown coverage, first of all. Dogs were in cover, too. Somehow we, we lose the Missouri receiver out in the flat. Nobody was around him, and then we missed the tackle on top of it. Tyreek McGee missed the tackle, but he altered the receiver's run enough to make him hop out of bounds by just about a half a foot. So the ball's at the 41-yard line of Georgia, and Missouri on the move quickly in Dogs' territory for the first time. First and 10 at our 41. Handoff. They run it straight ahead. Not much there. That's Larry Roundtree, number 34, the 5'10 sophomore, 210-pounder from Raleigh, North Carolina. Stopped by Tyler Clark, our defensive tackle from Americus. The gain is a little more than a half yard. Ball's touching the 40-yard line. It'll be second down and a long nine for the Tigers. And the way Missouri can throw the football, you've got to be stout in the running game. You can't let them get balanced to what they're trying to do. Four-man rush for Georgia. Man breaks through. Locks being chased. Still being chased. He slings it sidearm. It's caught or incomplete? Incomplete at the Georgia 39. Wanted to go to Nate Brown as Georgia had good up-the-field pressure. Looked like Michael Barnett and Clark perhaps and maybe even David Marshall got good blitz pressure on uh, Drew Locke and forced him to roll to his right, Z, and he dropped that release point and threw it sidearm incomplete. Yeah, he, he could throw from a lot of different launch angles. Very creative with how he gets the football out of his hand. But that's a very good sign for the dogs. If we can get pressure on Drew Locke and play zone behind it, it could be a long day for this Missouri offense. Third and a long nine. Ball just outside the Georgia 40-yard line. Tigers all in gold moving to our right. Locke, empty set. Five receivers in this formation. Has time. There goes a helmet rolling away. There goes the ball in the air. Fired it hard. And Blanton has it glance off his hands and incomplete. And now there's a flag in the Missouri backfield as well. Taylor and Mark Webb in coverage for Georgia on that incomplete pass. The dogs went just rushed three there, dropped eight back into coverage with that helmet flying off. You wonder if that was hands to the face. I think you're right. They knocked the helmet off the uh, head of the left tackle, Yasir Durant, who suffered an ankle injury against Purdue last week, didn't play after the injury, but back today. Brenton Cox may be the guilty party if this is the There are two the fouls call. on the play. Illegal formation, or excuse me, illegal touching. Number 11 was covered up, went downfield, and touched the pass. Personal foul, face mask, number one defense. Those fouls offset. Replay third down. Number 70 of the offense may remain in the game. 70 is the player who lost his helmet, Durant, and it was knocked off by the 
penalty on Brenton Cox, hands to the face. But as you heard, our referee Mark Curls explain, offsetting penalties. So we'll do it all over again. Third and nine for Missouri from the Georgia 40-yard line. We're scoreless. A little more than five minutes gone here in the first quarter in Columbia. One back in the backfield. That's Roundtree. And Locke will throw downfield, and the ball is caught around the 34-yard line. Now it's loose and picked up by Georgia. Georgia's running the other way with the football. The dogs are running down to the left, and uh, Tyson Campbell's going to go all the way into the end zone for an apparent touchdown. I don't see any flags, no whistles. Officials are indicating a score. Tyson Campbell has scored the first points of this ball game for the Dogs, six to nothing. Great job of the Dogs just standing up the Missouri receiver and ripping that football out. I think it was DeAndre Walker. It maybe wasn't DeAndre Walker, but we ripped the football out, scoop and score, a little turnabout there. All fair play. The Dogs get one back and. We get pay dirt out of it. Locke threw it, Z, to the tight end, Akui Boonham, and we held him up with two men, and he dropped the ball. And then Campbell picked it up on the bounce and was off to the races. Campbell ripped it out, and then he picked it up on the bounce and returned it for the touchdown. Boy, huge play right there for the dogs after it looked like Missouri was was getting a little something going. But, again, you get Missouri in a third and long situations where you can change up some of your defensive looks, take advantage of it, exactly what the dogs did right there. And not exactly the way we probably wanted to draw it up starting this football game, but the result looks mighty good. Missouri head coach Barry Odom's out on the field. I don't know if he's called a timeout, but he's conferring with the referee Mark Curls and one of the other officials. Now they have walked over to the Missouri sideline. Uh, and The call on the field is a Georgia touchdown. Georgia ripped the ball out of the arms of uh, Albert Okoy Boonham. And uh, Tyson Campbell, who ripped it out, picked it up on the bounce and took it 40 or 50 yards down the far side for an apparent touchdown. First charge timeout, Missouri. Missouri has taken a timeout, and we'll have to take a break as well. We'll check in with Chuck Dowdle when we come back, get some more information from the Georgia side. However, there was no lowering of the helmet, and truthfully, it looked like incidental contact. Now Tyson Campbell has gone into the tent with the medical staff. He went in under his own power. I think it was something with his perhaps his left shoulder, but as soon as I can get a medical uh, uh, word from the sideline, I'll pass it along. All right, Chuck, thank you very much. Uh, the play was not reviewed, by the way. Missouri called a timeout, but the officials did not stop the game to review the play. It was a clean fumble, strip, and pick up and run by Tyson Campbell. Here's the point after try by Rodrigo Blankenship. He kicks it into the Missouri student section where there's uh, the stone M to our left in the uh, north end zone. The extra point is good, and that completes the scoring play for the Dogs. Finally, it's 7 to nothing. The Dogs with their second defensive touchdown of the season. So 7 to nothing. Dogs with 9.01 to go here in the first quarter. And a good sign for the Dogs defensively. We have not yet brought any kind of pressure. No linebacker dogs, no safety blitzes. We've been able to apply some pressure just with either rushing three or four guys on that interception. DeAndre Walker came in, made contact with Drew Locke. Drew Locke still threw a good football there uh, out to Albert O that, that, that made the catch, and obviously we strip it. But, again, we're getting helmets uh, into the chest of Drew Locke early in this game, making him move around in the pocket so he's not throwing from a clean pocket. Then we're doing it without any kind of exotic looks. So Georgia had its first opening drive this season without points. It ended up being an interception, and Missouri on its first possession ends up turning the ball back to Georgia on a fumble, a strip by Tyson Campbell and Mark Webb, picked up by Campbell and returned 68 yards for a touchdown. Now the dogs will kick it away. Rodrigo kicks it to the left. Tyler Beatty is the deep man, stands on the goal line. And this one will come down short at the six-yard line. First return to kick by an opponent this season. Beatty breaks the tackle at the 18. Veers out far to the left across the 30 and chased out of bounds and hit there. And did they throw the late the, the flag after the push out of bounds? The Missouri students on that side. There, the student section is behind the Georgia bench on the far side of the field. And there's the flag. I see the flag. It's going to be a late hit on Georgia. After the run was out of bounds, personal foul, number 18, kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. 
First down. Uh, not good. That's on DeAndre Baker, and that will be marked off from the 34-yard line. So that's going to put uh, Missouri almost at midfield to start this possession. And they don't need that kind of help with this offense. No, they don't. And, and I'll tell you, that, that was not a not a dirty play at all there by DeAndre Baker. Kind of the flow of the play took him out of bounds. He kind of gave a late little shove. Maybe a nice acting job down there by Missouri <laughs> as well. So seven to nothing dogs, but Missouri with excellent starting field position at its own 49. Lock in the shotgun, round tree. No, that's Crockett now. We'll get the handoff and run straight ahead into Georgia territory quickly. Crockett had a huge hole and hit it quickly and down to the 35-yard line, a gain of 16. J.R. Reed hit him first, and then LeCount had to jump on top to ride him to the turf, but all the way down to the Georgia 35-yard line. Here's Crockett again, shaking to the left, runs in there behind left guard and tackle, and he'll work his way down close to the 31-yard line, a four-yard pickup. And Natrez Patrick, our linebacker, makes the stop as the dogs substitute defensively. Well, same exact play there from Missouri, just an inside trap play. First one, obviously, Gash just pretty much better defended, still not great on that second run. Second six, Tigers play fake from the 31. Locke floats it out to Okui Boonham, the tight end on the Georgia sideline. Makes the catch. Downfield he goes. Chased out of bounds and tackled by Brenton Cox at the Georgia 24-yard line. That's a gain of seven. And a Missouri first down. They're moving quickly. They go no huddle. Ball on the Georgia 24. Tigers moving to the right. Hand off by Locke, and then he fakes the throw afterward. He runs right into our defensive line. Damari Crockett grabbed by Tyler Clark and Michael Barnett and pulled back in the opposite direction. Forward progress puts him at the 23-yard line, a gain of one on the uh, rush by Damari Crockett, a former 1,000-yard rusher in his freshman season. He heads to the sideline. They substitute and put Tyler Beatty back in, a freshman and to line up behind Locke in the backfield. They'll run out of the pistol. 7-0 Georgia, 7-24, clock moving first quarter. Snap to Locke. He's got all kinds of time to throw. Just sets, plants, fires right over the middle to the big tight end, or one of them, and he drops it as he comes to the ground. That's Blanton. We may have stripped the ball out of his hands. DeAndre Walker was in on the play defensively for Georgia. He hit him between the hash marks. Blanton looked like he had the ball, but when he came down, it was incomplete. Dogs right now continuing just to play zone and, and, and relying on their front four defensive linemen to get pressure. That time, no pressure. Drew Locke able to sit and survey the field from a very clean pocket, delivered a good football, good play there in the, the Georgia secondary. But if you give Drew Locke that kind of time, he's going to find open guys. Dogs stripped it out from Blanton to force the incompletion. They try to set up a screen. We come with pressure and tip the ball. An offensive lineman tried to catch it, but it hits the turf. Brenton Cox tipped the, the pass as Missouri was trying to set up a screen, and it went off the uh, body of Trevor Wallace Sims, the right guard, and then it bounced to the turf. That's going to be fourth down now for the Tigers, and they're going to try a field goal. Of uh, see, so looks like they'll spot it down at the 31, a 41-yard try by Tucker McCann, who's eight of 11 on field goal tries this season. Kicking to the right, just inside the far hash. The kick is away towards the newly constructed end zone, and he missed it, I believe, to the left. It's no good. He missed it left on the 41-yard try, and our score remains Georgia seven and Missouri nothing. Did he miss it left or right? He missed it to the. <laughs> He missed to the right. He missed it to the right. <laughs> he missed it. I know that. It didn't go between the pipes. All right. Dogs seven. Tigers nothing. We've got a timeout here in Columbia. 7.04 to go. Coach Kirby Smart here. Today's broadcast is live from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth. Indeed, we are. Georgia leads Missouri 7 to nothing midway through the first quarter. Better buckle up because Sirius XM is zero to everything in 150 channels. You get commercial-free music, entertainment, comedy, news, and coverage of every major sport, including Georgia Bulldogs football. So tune in and let's ride. Missed field goal from 41 yards by Missouri kicker Tucker McCann has given the dogs the ball at their own 23-yard line. With a 7 to nothing lead, a defensive score for Georgia. From under center, Brian Harrion, a deep setback, some seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Stretch handoff to Harrion. He 
Runs left of center, up the near hash, across the 25 to the 26. Terry Beckner, Jr., defensive tackle, the first man to greet him for the Missouri defense. The gain is three to the 26. Let's go down to Chuck on the sidelines. Cook's Pest Control Report, Chuck. Yeah, Scott, uh, as I suspected, it was a left shoulder with Tyson Campbell. However, the good news, Leland Barrow of the Georgia staff has just passed along to me. It's fine. He missed that last defensive series, but he will be back in. All right, that is good news. Campbell with the touchdown. The only points of the game thus far. Hand off Holyfield. He runs right, cuts up field at the 25 to the 30. Andrew Thomas on the turf at left tackle slow to get up now he's assisted up gingerly kind of walking on that injured ankle he's going to come out of the ball game Cade Mays is going to come in as uh, Nate Anderson made the tackle on Holyfield and now the down and distance for the dogs is third down and four yards to go from our own 30 or 29 yard line this is where the dogs want to convert defense has been on the field quite a bit here in this first quarter want to see if we can extend this drive and chew up some clock from looking left in the shotgun. Play clock at four, now flat. Full start, number 87 offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. Well, that changes things up a little bit as our uh, receiver Simmons is flagged for a false start. So that'll put the ball back on the 24 yard line, back near the original line of scrimmage. So now it's third down and nine to go for the Bulldogs. Boy, those could be absolute killers as well. Just no excuse for that. When you're outside, you're looking at the ball anyway. Not sure what what caused that jump. Four receivers, two stacked to the left. Tight ends in the slot to the right. Fromm will throw. Deep ball. We jump in the air with Ridley. Tried to get a hand on it at the 40-yard line. Glances off his hands and bounces incomplete. The pocket was being squeezed as Fromm launched that ball a little bit early. He was being hit as he was letting it loose. And not able, uh, Z, it didn't look like Riley was able to really get completely out of his route to position himself to catch that football. Yeah, no doubt. Jack, Jake had to throw that early. Missouri brought a middle linebacker right over the A gap and then looped their defensive end right behind that oncoming linebacker. We didn't have anybody there to pick him up. He was right in the face of Jake Fromm. Jake never got a chance to step into that one, which created the, the high throw and the early throw. And that was Therese Hall that was applying pressure. Dogs will punt with Jake Camarda. And check whistles and flags. There's a flag down at the 22-yard line near the line of scrimmage. Somebody may be offsides. Before the snap, false start, number 87 offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. That's two on Tyler now. Simmons with another false start penalty. And that's going to back us up five more yards, and Camarda will have to kick it. Missouri was coming after that punt, too. Reset the game clock to 522. 522 on the game clock, please. Jonathan Johnson is the uh, punt return man for the Tigers. A couple of returns, negative yardage on his punt returns thus far. So we'll try to kick it out of a hole. Line of scrimmage is now the 19-yard line. Camarda's kick high, hanging, not real long. Going to come down near midfield, take a bulldog bounce into Missouri territory and roll dead around the 45-yard line. It was not returnable. The punt was only 36 yards, and Missouri will have the football on their own 45-yard line, trailing 7 to nothing with 5-10 to go here in the first quarter. Dogs playing with some fire right now, giving this Missouri offense the football in great field position. Yeah, every time, every time they've had the ball, they started that last drive uh, at the 49. They had an interception that had good field position. Uh, they had a kick return and uh, tacked on to that uh, with a out-of-bounds late hit penalty that put them on the 49 on the previous possession, and now here they are starting at the 45-yard line. Southwest Airlines has low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. Tigers will run it on first and 10 from the 45. Roundtree bounces out left. He had nowhere to go straight ahead. He was able to just kind of move laterally or right down the line of scrimmage to his left and find some running room out on the edge across the 50 to the Georgia 49. Tyson Campbell back in and making the tackle on that play. Six-yard pickup 
for the Tigers, second down and four. Well, we had Richard LeCount coming in from a safety position that just got tripped up, or he would have made that tackle in the backfield. Here's Roundtree again, burst through a hole at left tackle Round into three. the second level, and a first down run for Roundtree, the 5'10", 210-pound sophomore from Raleigh. The ball down to the Georgia 44-yard line. That's a five-yard gain. Rochester and Taylor. A lineman and a linebacker make the tackle for the Georgia defense. And Missouri can see what the dogs are trying to do defensively. Sit back, play cover two, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult to throw the football. They're taking advantage of it and trying to run it. Locke will give it to Roundtree again. Again, bounces outside to the left. We close in with our secondary. Campbell with a tackle up high around the neck and the headgear, along with LeCount on the far side of the field to stop Roundtree at the 40 one yard line that's three more yards in the positive direction however for the tigers they'll keep it on the ground second down seven coming up from the bulldog 41 yard line it's a seven to nothing georgia lead under four minutes to go here in the first quarter locks back in the shotgun the senior from lee summit missouri gonna fire caught by the big tight end he jumps between the hash marks at the 34 that's albert okua Boonham. Makes the catch, tackled at the 33. Tyreek McGee jumped on top and rode the big man down, but it's a first down. And the gain is seven. Here's Locke now going to keep it and run it himself towards the far side of the field. He angles out of bounds inside the 25 at the 23-yard line. Now Missouri goes up tempo there. Little read option in an easy read. We collapsed on the, the, the run look there. Drew Locke, a very good athlete, even at 6'4", 225 pounds, able to get outside and run the football pretty well. He got a first down inside the 25. The Tigers work trying to get points here for the first time. Play fake Locke. He's backpedaling. He slings it to a receiver open. Okui Boonham cut in front of uh, the intended target who was Roundtree. They were right there together, and the big tight end just cut right in front of him and took it away from his teammate, caught it, and out of bounds, tackled on the far sideline by uh, Richard LeCount at the Georgia 13-yard line. That's almost a full 10, nine and three quarters. It's going to be second down and inches for the guys in gold, and they'll spot the ball just outside the Georgia 13. Tigers work on the far hash, moving towards our right as we look at it here at Piedmont Healthcare Radio Booth. And we'll hand our uh, Tigers rather will hand it off to Roundtree. Nearly stumbles and falls. He puts his hand on the ground and keeps driving. And it paid off for him. He drives inside the 10 down to the seven yard line. Take Crowder, J.R. Reed on the stop of the Georgia defense. But it's going to be a first down and goal to goal opportunity now for Missouri. And this Missouri offensive line winning the battle against the Georgia defensive line. We're just getting pushed off the ball at the moment. This Georgia defense has been on the field quite a bit here in this first quarter. Gain was six. Watch out for Emmett Hall now. Wide receiver to the far left. Leading receiver in the SEC. He's in the ball game. Play fake lock will go the opposite direction. Throw it in the end zone. Back right corner and incomplete. Tried to go to Nate Brown, the senior from North Gwinnett High School in Suwannee, Georgia. It's broken up. Incomplete. Eric Stokes was in coverage on the back right pylon in the corner of the end zone. Let's check in with Chuck on the sidelines. Cook's pest control. Chuck? Yeah, Scott, uh, Stokes has had to come back in for Campbell. He had to come back out and went back under the tent, so he's trying. All right, Chuck, thanks very much. Uh, Stokes is coming to your side now as he switches with uh, the Missouri receiver. He's working on corner on the far side of the field. Here's Locke. High snap. Pulls it down. Hands it to round three. Spinning and driving towards the goal line. And he got in on second and third effort with a lot of help from his offensive lineman who got in there behind the pile and just drove it right into the black and gold end zone. And Missouri on the board with a touchdown run by Larry Roundtree, and it's 7-6. to six. Uh, We'll see if the dogs come out and make any adjustments there defensively. Missouri just way too much on the ground right now. You know you don't want Drew Locke to beat you, but you can't let them be as balanced as they've been here on the last couple of drives. And dogs really dictating that by the kind of defensive looks that we're in right now. Two deep safeties and, and, and really being conscious of this Missouri passing game, but giving up way too big a chunks in the running game. Tucker McCann to try the point after for the Tigers to try and tie the ball game. There's the snap, the placement, the kick. Sails into the construction zone. It's good. And it's 
The Tigers 7 and Georgia 7 with 2.03 to go here in the first quarter. We've got a timeout at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. All knotted up at 7 apiece. The Bulldogs and the Tigers on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. Gore, Georgia, and Missouri tied here late in the first quarter. Tigers went 55 yards in nine plays and capped that drive with a seven-yard touchdown run by Larry Roundtree as his offensive lineman pushed him into the end zone as it had stalled out at about the one or maybe a little bit inside. And those big linemen got behind that pile and just shoved it right into the end zone. Here's Tucker McCann to kick it away now for Missouri. Miko Hardman, the deep receiver, in the end zone. The ball sailing in his direction, but Hardman will let it bounce over his head eight yards deep in the end zone for the touchback. And the Dogs will get the ball first and ten at the 25 in a tie ball game. Champions for Charity Game is on every time we win Camp Twin Lakes, the Salvation Army, and Children's Health Care of Atlanta win because Walton Gas will donate $1,000 to these local charities. And for every bowl game the dogs win, Walton Gas will donate $5,000. Everyone's a winner with Walton Gas. Jake Fromm is the quarterback. He'll line up under center. Lamont Gilliard, the center. DeAndre Swift, the tailback. One receiver right and one to the left. Double tight end formation with Werner and Nauta. We're going to run it with DeAndre. Swift bounces out. Fakes a man, gave a man a beautiful move as he cut inside at the 33-yard line and got seven more yards after that move. Straight ahead up to the 40. That's a 15-yard run and a first down for the Bulldogs. Brought to you by Scana Energy. One of the more ridiculous cuts you're going to see a running back make right there. Just a little juke to, the, to his right and it left. The Missouri defender stumbling over himself. Oliver and Hall. <laughs> that was the combination. One guy was left grasping at air. The other one made the tackle 15 yards downfield. Holyfield runs to the right with a big hole, cuts up field. He's tackled low and somersaults to the 50-yard line. Cam Hilton went low. And Elijah Holyfield, who had 100 last week in the win over Middle Tennessee State, tumbles to the 50-yard line, head over heels for another nice game and another scan of energy first down at midfield. Yeah, that's a little more like it for the dogs. Coming out, getting back to the roots, just running the football. Need to get and control the clock here a little bit to give this defense some kind of a rest. Less than a minute to go in the quarter. Holyfield for 10 that time. Now bounces out to the right. Still running. He's got 10. He's got 15. He's got 17, 18, 19. Down to the 20. Where are they going to spot it? They're going to bring it back a little bit at the 30. 33-yard line. Demarcus AC in the secondary went low for Holyfield. That's probably the best way to tackle the big, beefy Holyfield. He went low and submarined him at the Missouri 33-yard line, and that's a 17-yard gain and another Bulldog first down. That one right over the back of Lamont Gilliard, but a great block down field by Nicole Hardman. Swift is the back. Lines up behind Fromm in the pistol. Nauta flip-flops from right to left. Handoff Swift. Runs to the left, cuts back right, no room there. He ran into our lineman and then tried to bounce back outside towards left tackle and is stopped by Walter Palmore, the nose man from Columbus, Georgia. Just not a lot of space there for DeAndre Swift to find room to run. He stopped at the 33-yard line for no gain. It'll be second down and 10 as we go to quarter number two. That was the final play of the first quarter. Georgia 7, Missouri 7, here at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. Quarter number two on the way next here on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. You know. Three-yard line thus far with running by Swift and Holyfield. Yeah, no question. And having a hard time, the dogs are throwing the football as well and protecting Jake Fromm. He's had pressure in his face pretty consistently here throughout the first quarter of this football game. So if we can get something going here on the ground, loosen this Missouri defense up a little bit, all will be good signs for the dogs. Jake coming into this game completing 80% of his passes thus far this season, just two of five today for 17 yards. But still early, just starting quarter number two. Dogs now... We'll be moving the football to our right as we view it. Two receivers to the left. One comes in motion. That's Hardman. Handoff from to Swift straight ahead. Pile moves to the 30, maybe just inside the 30-yard line. And we got a flag down now. Hang on just a second. We might have an unsportsmanlike because the flag came in the pile where the tackle was being made, and there were lots of big bodies in there. Our official is 
Mark Curls. He's the referee. And he's talking to one of his uh, crewmates right now. Here's the call. After the play, they're offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. Number 66 offense, 36 defense, 29 defense. Correction. Those fouls offset. They were their first unsportsmanlike conduct fouls of the game. It's third down. Oh, Solomon Kinley for Georgia, Nate Anderson for Missouri. Offsetting fouls. Ball's on the 30. That was a three-yard gain. It's third down and seven for Georgia on the Tiger 30 in a tie ball game. We're seven apiece. Fromm drops back in the shotgun. Brian Harrion shifts in the backfield to his right side. Harrion will go out into the flat. Fromm looks, looks. A man falls at his feet. He'll throw it, dump it off to the left to the tight end. Isaac Nauta, he's tackled quickly by Nate Anderson on the far sideline at the 27-yard line. The gain is only three, and it's going to be fourth down for the Bulldogs and still some work to do. And they'll try to get some points here with Rodrigo Blankenship. And a 44-yard try, it looks like. Kicking on the far hash. A little bit of wind coming behind him and across his body. Kicking it to the right to try to break a 7-7 tie. 44-yard try for Blankenship. The junior from Marietta. There's the snap and the hold by Kamara. Kick is on the way, and it is good. Yes, sir. Right into the construction zone and right between the pipes. And Rodrigo Blankenship remains perfect with his field goal tries this season. Now four for four and a 44-yarder has put Georgia up by a score of 10 to 7. That was another All-State good hands field goal. And Z, good to get points on that possession for the Dogs. Yeah, good answer there by the Dogs and started to establish a little bit of a running game on that last third down play. I think the Dogs expected to get some kind of man-to-man. Missouri has been bringing an awful lot of pressure, a lot of run blitzes, a lot of different kind of dogs with their linebackers as well. That time sat back in a zone. We had a crossing route um, uh, dialed up against that Missouri defense that really is a man-to-man kind of play because you're going to get some natural picks going across as you've got those crossers crossing one another. But they sit back in zone. They actually caught our receiver coming across the field. Isaac Nauta, no really uh, other place to go with the football. So good decision there by Jake Fromm uh, to take a small profit there. Uh, help your field goal kicker out a little bit, and it paid off with three points. And the dogs go up 10-7. to seven. With uh, Blankenship ready to kick it away from left to right. Beatty, the deep man, stands on the goal line. And Hot Rod's kick hits the back line of the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Your Georgia medals drive summary on that last scoring possession for Georgia. 44-yard field goal by the Bulldogs. 48 yards in seven plays. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. Let's go down to Chuck on the sidelines. Cook's Pest Control Report, Chuck. Scott, uh, Tyler Simmons missed that last offensive series with a right shoulder injury. I'm told that he will be out for now. That's all they're saying, but a right shoulder injury for Tyler Simmons. All right. Thanks, Chuck. So that's... uh, Campbell and Simmons so far today that are currently out of the ball game. One on offense and one on defense for the Dogs. Snap to lock out of the pistol. They'll run it. Demarie Crockett takes the handoff from the senior quarterback. Runs straight up the field into the arms of Natrez Patrick, the linebacker. Makes the tackle at the 32. That's a gain of seven yards. Second down at three. That's too many yards on first down for the Georgia defense. Boy, there's no doubt that big right guard from Missouri, Wallace Sims, 330 pounds, leading the way. He was eight yards downfield, pushing a Georgia defender backwards. Snap to lock. He fakes it and throws. He pulls it out of the belly, fires to his tight end, Blanton, who makes the catch going down to the ground, tackled by Walter Grant at the 37-yard line. Five-yard gain and a first down. For Missouri. Well, if Missouri can run the football, all of a sudden everything else they do in the passing game gets better. Their play action becomes better. Their up tempo becomes better. We've got to be able to get this Missouri offense in second and third long situations. Dogs have Jay Hayes, Mikhail Carter in the ball game, defensive lineman along with Rochester. Snap to lock. He hands it to Crockett. Crockett runs, tries to angle a little bit at left tackle across the 40 to the 42 and tackled by Walter Grant again, the linebacker from Cairo, Georgia. 
Uh, just on the right edge of the Missouri logo near the middle of the field. The ball's on the 42 for the Tigers. That was almost a full five-yard run. Second down and five for the Tigers as they continue to move. 10-7, to seven, Georgia leads here in the second quarter. Locke with a runner off to his left. That's Crockett. He will throw. Quick release by, by Locke. It's picked off. Off a tip by Georgia. The dogs have caught it. Tate Crowder is running to the near side. He's got a little bit of a convoy at the 10 down to the 8. He'll be tackled down there. He caught the tipped ball. The receiver was wide open. Jonathan Johnson mishandled the pass. And Crowder, with his first career interception, returns it 50 yards down to the 7-yard line of Missouri. Boy, just a break there for the dogs as well. We brought the strong side in the middle linebacker. Missouri threw it hot, and it was a good ball there by Locke. Just couldn't be controlled. That ball pops up in the air. We get one gift wrap. Now let's see if we can make them pay. That was the second turnover by the Tigers here in this half. The return on the interception was 43 yards as Crowder caught the tip at the 50 and down to the seven-yard line. It's goal to go. The dog's in the Massey-Ferguson red zone. And Fields is in the ball game. He drops back to pass. He fakes it. He pulls it down. He will run. He works his way through the line of scrimmage down to the five, maybe the four. He got three yards. They're going to spot him at the four-yard line. He had a little bit of an opening. But Justin Fields, the freshman quarterback from Kennesaw, pulled it down maybe a little bit late starting his run because that hole closed in a hurry. And now Fromm will come back into the ballgame for the Dogs. And it's exactly where we thought we might see Justin Fields situationally in a tight football game. And if nothing else, it just puts it into the minds of everybody that we're going to play that, yeah, we're going to use Justin Fields and all of his talents in a number of different ways. Second goal, Tigers four. Shotgun snap to Fromm. Throws into the end zone. Back corner. Caught by Hardman. No out of bounds, they say. Right on the flag in the back left corner of the end zone. Miko caught the ball, but uh, was not in bounds, says the official. Right on the play. We'll take a look at the replay. Clearly made the catch. Did he get a foot in? Nope. Half his foot was on the line, on the white line. The call is good by the officials. It'll be third and goal from the four for the Bulldogs. Well-thrown football there by Jake Fromm. Missouri uh, almost suckered us in to a throw there we didn't want to make, but Fromm able to get that one outside. There was a cornerback that was sifting back into that play. Godwin's off to the left. Fromm looking in his direction. will throw to Terry. Hand fighting going on. He tried to make a recreation of the Notre Dame catch. Fighting off a man and jumping in the air to make a one-handed grab. Couldn't do it. Demarcus Acey in coverage to help break up the pass play. And the Dogs, who had it goal to go after the Tay Crowder interception and return down to the seven, will have to try a short field goal here from the four-yard line. They'll spot the ball at the 11. A 21-yard field goal try just like an extra point for Blankenship it's right between the hash marks in front of the uprights dogs try to go up 13 to 7 with three more here Nick Moore the snapper Jake Camarda the holder and the kick is away by Blankenship and he blasts it through their good so the dogs get three they wanted seven but we'll take three instead 13 to 7 is our score Number two, Georgia, leading the Tigers here in the second quarter. Back in a moment on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. It was only three yards and four plays after the interception by Tay Crowder down to the seven. Dogs couldn't punch it in. They get the 21-yard field goal by Blankenship. The Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. We're watching this one from the Piedmont Healthcare radio booth here at Faroe Field. And Rodrigo Blankenship is getting set to kick it away to Tyler Beatty, or at least punch it in his direction. Dogs with a 13-7 lead, 11.07 to go second quarter. Ball teed up on the 35. Blankenship kicks from left to right. Puts his foot into it, booms it. That one's going to sail through the end zone for the touchback. And let's go down to Chuck on the sidelines for Cook's Pest Control Report. Chuck? Well, guys, you, you guys both mentioned that Georgia's best opportunity to score there may have been when Justin Fields took that snap. He didn't put it away and make his move right up the middle quickly enough, and that hole closed. And when he came to the sideline, Coach Smart came over and very lovingly I mean, put his hand up around his helmet, got right in the ear hole and talked to him. But if I had to guess my hand by the gestures that Coach Smart, he was making exactly that point to Justin. And when that hole's open, son, you got to tuck it and go. 
Instead, Chuck, thank you very much. The dogs settle for three and take a six-point lead. As Missouri gets the football back, first and 10 at the 25. They're all in goal today. Locke with a play fake. Long throw deep down the far sideline. Man-to-man coverage with Baker and Hall, and it is incomplete. Ball lands out of bounds. Boy, DeAndre was right there, shoulder to shoulder with Emmanuel Hall, the senior 6'3 receiver who leads the SEC in most receiving categories coming into today's game. I don't think he has a catch thus far. Well, no doubt a great job. Baker actually pushed Hall almost out of bounds there. Uh, As a matter of fact, I think he did push him out of bounds. No place for Drew Locke to throw that football. Second and 10 from the 25 for Missouri. Locke with pressure. Throws it. High effort going up in the air is Jalen Knox. He was trying to catch it. He was being tackled at the same time by Eric Stokes. And his hands over the defender. He was dropping the football right on the Missouri sideline at the 35-yard line. He dropped it while Stokes was trying to tackle him to the turf. Incomplete. It'll be third down and 10 now for the Tigers. Great job there by Stokes. That ball, if that would have been thrown on the back shoulder, probably would have been a completion. But then Stokes in perfect position. Here comes Keon Richardson with a blitz. And Locke's forced to unload it before he wanted to. Goes to Tyler Beatty. Skips it off the turf. It's incomplete. Good pressure by the uh, senior linebacker, Keon Richardson. Forced Locke to get rid of that football. And Missouri will apparently go three and out here and kick it away. Love the defensive call right there. We've been sitting back in zone, but we get them in third and long. We bring pressure, trying to force a side adjustment throw in front of the chains. Corey Fatoni on to punt it away for Missouri. Long spiral. Fair catch called for by Mecole Hardman. He moves to his right and catches it right on the Missouri sideline at the 33-yard line. Dogs will have the ball. The punt was 42 yards. No return. 10.45 to go first half. We're in the second quarter with Georgia leading Missouri 13-7 on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. Coach Kirby Smart here. Today's broadcast is live from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth. Dogs will have possession at their own 33-yard line. Let's pause for station identification on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Scana Energy is a proud partner of the George Bulldogs Sports Network. For every touchdown the dogs score, Scana Energy will make a $500 donation to the University of Georgia General Scholarship Fund. 13-7, Georgia leads. A couple of field goals by Blankenship and a defensive touchdown. That's Georgia's points. Try to get an offensive score in this possession. Fromm with a throw to the right side, batted down at the line of scrimmage by big Walter Palmore. Never got anywhere in the vicinity of the intended target, Riley Ridley who was posting up about seven yards downfield, but Fromm's pass batted away incomplete. It'll be second and ten from the Dogs' 33-yard line. Palmore did exactly what your coach. You get started at the line of scrimmage, get your hands up. Dogs were just trying to throw a quick hitch, a little five-yard hitch on the outside. It would have been there as well. From and the Georgia offense working on the near hash, moving to the right. We shift the tight end. Two receivers to the far side. We'll send Holyfield running in that area. A little bit of blocking on the edge. Check a flag behind the play as Holyfield cuts up at the hash and will be tackled at the 38-yard line by Therese Hall, linebacker from Lithonia, Georgia. But let's check the flag in Georgia's backfield. Holding number 66 offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. They flagged Big Solomon Kinley, 335-pounder, 6'4", redshirt sophomore from Jacksonville. And that penalty going to wipe out that run and cost Georgia 10 yards as well. Ball back on our 23-yard line. Our offense, Z, kind of stuck in the mud a little bit. Can't really get going much of anything going. Boy, right now, exactly the case. Missouri's been very aggressive on the defensive side of the ball. A lot of pressure, whether they're coming from... Linebackers occasionally bringing some safety pressure, uh, but they are taking it to us right now. From with a play fake, he pump fakes, he throws. It's caught by Ridley at the 39 near sideline, tackled there around the ankles by Khalil Oliver, the free safety. But up to the 39 is going to be a gain of 16 yards. Good read. The dogs with a little bit of work to do. Third down and four coming up, Zeke. Good read right there by Jake Fromm. 
That time, Missouri went into a cover two look. We had a flat corner combination. The corner didn't sift back at all, so it was an easy read, easy throw for Jake. Balls on the Georgia 39-yard line. Dogs with a third down and four, just one for five on third down conversion tries so far. Fromm in the pocket, moves around. Throws it wide open to Holyfield, right flat at the 44, 50, down inside Missouri territory on the near sideline and pushed out of bounds at the Tiger 37-yard line by Cale Garrett, the middle linebacker. Big play, and the Dogs needed it right then. What a fantastic read by Jake Fromm. Holyfield was his fourth option there. He was trying to go to the field side. 24 yards on the game. Dogs go quickly, no huddle. They run it straight up the gut with uh, Elijah this time. Down to the 30, well, he ended up on the 31, but they're going to bring it back a couple of yards to the 33, so it's a four-yard four yard gain for the Dogs. Second down and a long five, they say. Great patience right there by Elijah. That hole's not there immediately, but he bounced around just long enough until he had a crease and opened up. DeAndre Swift checks into the ball game now. He'll line up behind Fromm. We flip up the tight end, Nauta. Left edge, outside Cade Mays, the tackle. Swift runs right in that spot. Big Beckner breaks free of his block and uh, hits Swift up high behind the line of scrimmage at the 33-and-a-half yard line. Beckner, NFL prospect, 295, 6'4", senior from East St. Louis, Illinois, with a terrific defensive play to stop Swift back at the 33. Yeah, Kirby Smart hot on that play as well. That might have been a check with me at the line of scrimmage, and Jake didn't get us into the right play. Not sure why else Kirby would have been so animated on the sideline. So third down, six to go for the Dogs. Ball's on the Tiger 33-yard line with Georgia leading it 13-7. to seven. Just about midway through the second quarter. From under center. Handoff. Swift. Man dives at his feet. Swift can't sidestep him enough. Cam Hilton, the safety, up playing the run. Came diving in low at Swift. Knocked him off balance. He wasn't able to maintain his feet and head downfield. And Missouri stops the dogs again at the 33-yard line. Maybe the 32-and-a-half. He got about a half a yard on the uh, second effort at the end of that play. And the dogs are going to go reaching again. Try a long field goal just inside the 50. 50-yard mark. This will be a 49-yard field goal try by Rodrigo Blankenship. Kicking it to the right. Ball's inside the far hash. Missouri loads the line. Moore with the snap. Camarda with the placement. The kick is away, kind of low, and angled to the right. He missed it. Blankenship misses for the first time this year. He missed it off to the right. The 49-yard try is no good. Our score remains Georgia 13, Missouri 7. Timeout here in Columbia with 7.17 to go here in the producer. Georgia 13, Missouri 7 with 7.17 to go here in the second quarter. And right now you can come in and get exceptional offers on all BMWs in stock. Visit one of your Atlanta area BMW centers today for test drive. Proud to be the official luxury vehicle of Georgia Athletics. Visit BTL.com for more offer details. Missouri will have the football on their own 33, 32-yard line, I guess, officially after the missed field goal try by Blankenship, a 49-yard effort wide to the right, his first miss this season. And Georgia has a six-point lead. Our defense is back out there with uh, Rochester and Ledbetter and Daquan Hawkins-Muckle. Handoff, Missouri. They'll run it with Larry Roundtree, his lock. Put it in his belly. Roundtree straight ahead running to the 35. A gain of three. Ledbetter and Natrez Patrick, the linebacker on the stop for the Bulldog defense. Walter Grant heads to the sideline. Dogs substitute. We get an extra back in the game. McGee, Baker, LeCount, Reed all in the ball game in the secondary. Dogs will defense the run as a flag comes in at the end of the play. Roundtree tried to bounce out to the right at the 35. Ridden to the turf by Jonathan Ledbetter. Holding number 74, offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Well, they don't have a 74, and they're too deep. But the uh, holding penalty is against Missouri. They have Mark Curls. Correction, the foul was on 77. There you go. They misread the number. Paul Adams, the right tackle. From Nashville, Tennessee, flagged for holding. That'll back the Tigers up to the 25-yard line. 
So second down and a long way to go. Second 17 now for Missouri on their own 25. Clock ticking at 645 here in the second quarter. Much better job there by the Dogs' defensive front on those last two run plays, getting some penetration early. Here's Locke with time. In the pocket, he bounces, he throws, crossing route, complete at the 26. And not much after that. Roundtree. Just got the dump off throw, and J.R. Reed hit him first, and Natrez Patrick finished him off. The gain was only two to the 27. Good job of the Dogs' defensive secondary there, keeping the football in front of them. Second and forever there. You just want to try to keep them in a third and long situation, make sure nothing's thrown behind you. And Dogs again have Missouri now in a third and long situation. We brought pressure last couple of times we've been in this situation. Two receivers left and right. Tigers work on the near hash, moving to our left. Rock, uh, Lock, rather, will throw, and it's incomplete. A twisting, spinning effort by Nate Brown, but terrific coverage by Eric Stokes, a redshirt freshman from Covington, as the pass is incomplete in front of the Missouri bench. And again, the Tigers will go three and out, and they'll have to send on Corey Fatoni to try to punt it away. Maybe Hardman, this is his moment to make something happen on special teams like he did last week. Missouri may be gotten away with the hold there up front, but what you can't deny is the downfield coverage. We come after the punt, and we block it. Stokes picks it up on the bounce. Touchdown, touchdown, Eric Stokes. Have yourself a game, young man. Great job, defensive secondary. And then comes and blocks that one, just takes it right off the foot of the Missouri punter. And we've had a couple of Sunday hops right into our lap that have led to touchdowns. Right off the turf, Stokes, who made a fine play to break up the third down pass, blocked the punt, caught the bounce, and scored the touchdown. So a special team score and a defensive score and two field goals. That's Georgia's total of 19. That touchdown by Eric Stokes brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta with over 90 destinations you love. Here's Blankenship for the point after try. The ball is down. The kick is in the air, and it is good. So Rodrigo remains perfect on extra points, and Georgia increases its lead to 20-7. to seven. They loaded the line. They blocked the punt. They get six and then seven with the point after try by Blankenship. 5.45 to go in the half. Georgia 20, Tigers 7 on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Georgia redshirt freshman Eric Stokes blocks a punt, returns at eight yards for a touchdown. That's your Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. New score, Georgia 20, Missouri 7, 545 to go second quarter. Here's Rodrigo Blankenship to kick it away now. And Tyler Beatty, the lone deep man on the goal line. And Blankenship's kick sailing and angling to the left, and it's going to bounce about four and a half, five yards deep in the end zone. Beatty doesn't touch it, and he'll let it be a touchback. Tigers ball on the 25 when we continue here in a second. Let's check in with Chuck on the sidelines. Cook's Pest Control Report, Chuck. Guys, I don't know if television caught it or not, but when Stokes blocked that punt and ran in the end zone, Kirby Smart flung his visor and high-stepped from the 30 down to the 15. I have never seen anything like that since his sprint with Swift at the SEC Championship last year. It'll have to be a Sports Center top 10 if TV caught it. Georgia's first block punt for a touchdown since 2006 when C.J. Bird blocked one against UAB. Here's uh, Missouri now. First and 10 on the 25. Trailing by 13 points. They'll run it with Roundtree. He runs through a tackler on the left side of the line of scrimmage. That's Crockett, not Roundtree. Demarie Crockett with a run to the 30. Stopped by Richard LeCount and Michael Barnett. After a five-yard gain, dogs have a player slow to get up. That's Cox, Brenton Cox. Apparently injured on the play, still sitting on the ground, and he's being treated by the medical training staff for UGA. So play has stopped for a moment. If you know someone who makes an impact on their community, Team UGA presented by Georgia Powers now accepting nominations for members who demonstrate an unselfish giving attitude. Submit your nominations at georgiadogs.com. Dogs with an injured player, 531 to go. First half, Georgia 20. Missouri 7, and Z, the dogs are finding different ways 
to score today. A defensive touchdown, a special teams touchdown, a couple of field goals. We're waiting for that offense to kick it into gear, but hasn't really happened thus far. But neither has Missouri's. Well, no, no, they haven't. And the dogs, the past couple of series, have done a good job getting this Missouri offense into third and long situations. And then we- Hands of uh, Albert Okui Boom, uh, Okui Boonham. And uh, this is, should stick with Albert O, right? Albert uh, O. He stripped it and then ran 68 yards on a fumble return for a touchdown. The dogs have added a couple of field goals by Rodrigo Blankenship, a 44-yarder and a 21-yarder. And then just moments ago, Eric Stokes blocks a punt of Corey Fatoni, picks it up off the bounce, returns it eight yards into the end zone for a score. All right, back and ready to go. Second down in uh, five for the Tigers. Play fake lock. He's going to roll to the right. Rolling and looking. Looking, still looking. And he will just dump it out of bounds on the far sideline. And here comes the flag in behind the play, behind the quarterback. Thrown by the referee, Mark Curls. Missouri saw something they didn't like on the far side. The students were booing. Was there a hold on Georgia? Perhaps Walter Grant may have been flagged for holding. Yeah, I don't think there was any question about that. It was a uh, – we wrapped him up in a full tackle. number 84 defense. Holding an eligible receiver to a forward pass play that crossed the line. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Walter Grant holding Nate Brown. And that costs the Dogs 10, and that puts the ball on the 40. Tigers first and 10 on their own 40, trailing 20-7 to with 5.16 to go here in quarter number two at Faro Field on a bright, sunny day. Temperature in the upper 60s. Lock, shotgun snap. Now flags and whistles again. This one may go against the Tigers, although both teams are pointing at one another right now. Georgia's saying false start, and Missouri's saying, nope, offside. The officials will confer and figure this one out. Back-to-back flags on back-to-back plays now to slow things down a little bit with 5.15 to go here in the first half. Officials, long discussion on this one. I think what they're trying to decide is, did we entice the move? We we were actually bringing pressure right up the A-gap with a movement occurred. Number 77, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. And they got the tackle again, Paul Adams. Second time he's been flagged today. So they'll back up the Tiger offense, five yards to the 35. Please reset the game clock to 516. 516 on the game clock, please. And as you hear referee Mark Curls, 516 to play here in the first half. Dogs with Marshall and Barnett. And Wyatt across the front line. And Walker is up on the right edge as a linebacker. They hand it off to Beatty. Tyler Beatty runs down the line to the right, cuts up field at the 36, and will be stopped by DeAndre Walker at the 39-yard line. Pick up a four. Great Second job. down, 11 yards to go for the Tigers. Real, really nice job there by DeAndre Walker. He had Drew Locke on the read option in case... Drew Locke pulled it, was able to maintain his position still. Enough juice to get down the line and make the tackle. Missouri loads up three receivers to the left. Locke stands solid in the pocket, just dumps it off to the right. And that is Beatty again, catching it in the right flat near the sideline. And he'll be stopped after a short gain after the catch at the 43-yard line. Eric Stokes and David Marshall on the hit. Ball on the 43. That's a pickup of four. So third down and some work to do for the Tiger offense. Third down and seven. And the ball is at the Missouri 43-yard line. Missouri has not converted to third down today. They're 0 for 4. Lock back in the shotgun. One back to his right. Lock backpedaling, backpedaling, looking. Now fires. Crossing route. Caught at the 35 by Big Hall. Strips one tackle. No, that's the tight end, Okui Boonham. And then he's finished off on the Missouri sideline, but second effort, I think, got him the first down. Walter Grant making the tackle. If we had hit him and put him on the ground with the first hit, he wouldn't have gotten the first down, but he was able to pick it up at the Georgia 49-yard line. Yeah, we brought all kinds of pressure there, but as we brought both linebackers to the line of scrimmage, we got blown up, and then Drew Lott could just sit back there and survey the field forever, put our secondary in a really tough spot. LeCount missed the tackle, and that allowed Akui Boonham to pick up the first down, eight-yard gain, ball on the dogs' 49-yard line. Tigers moving to our left as we view it. 
He will hand it off to Beatty. He's looking for some daylight. All he sees is white shirts and red helmets. There's nothing there. And they'll give him forward progress to the line of scrimmage. I don't really think he got that far. He was piled up at the 50. Tackle was made by Malik Herring leading the charge defensively for Georgia. They put the ball back on the 49, say no gain. It might have actually been a loss, but they'll say no gain. So it's second down and 10 for the Tigers who trail 20 to 7 here in the first half. Locke ready for the snap. Takes it. Play fake. Quick throw out to the right. One-on-one. Got to make an open field tackle. Pass to Nate Brown. We make the tackle. Reed got enough of him as Brown tried to dive past the defender. And he does just that for a handful of yards. New line of scrimmage will be the 42 of the Bulldogs. The game was seven. Good read there by Drew Locke. Dogs had a zone blitz look there, so never really gave anything away that we were going to bring pressure. He had his eyes on the right spot, who they couldn't pick up with their protection, and just delivered a little hot route. Third three and a half for Missouri. They work on the far hash. Locke wants to throw. We knocked the ball out of his hands. It's loose. Is it an incomplete pass? No whistle or indication yet. Who fell on the ball? Now Mark Curls, the referee, says an incomplete pass. DeAndre Walker, did he – he stripped him. He stripped the ball out of his hands or got his arm as he was in the motion of passing the football. We'll take a look on the replay, but they are indicating that it's an incomplete pass, and it's going to be fourth down for Missouri. Pass. Incomplete, fourth down. Looking at a replay, and Walker came by. He couldn't tell from the replay that we saw, and now they're going to review it or no? Tony. Ruling on the field of an incomplete forward pass is on a further review. They will indeed. And this play under review is brought to you by Barbasol. Dog fans, Barbasol is offering you a chance to score big when you join the new Barbasol Shave Club. Grab your premium starter kit for just $6.99 today with code FOOTBALL at Barbasol.com. Barbasol, game on. And we're looking at that replay, and uh, let's go down to Chuck for more. Cook's Pest Control sideline. Chuck? Scott, this is where our little trip to Birmingham pays off. Remember, they've changed that rule. Right. The rule is no longer the arm. It's that wrist. It's the hand coming forward. So that is now the new rule to try to make it easier for these officials to make that call. They say it's the hardest call an official has to make is incomplete or fumble. Well, and that ball was out, I believe, although I get these wrong all the time. But Baker was... recovered it, by the way, for Georgia, so that's the, how the play ended. That's not the call on the field, but Georgia recovered the ball. If it is called a fumble, it should be Georgia's possession. Well, and, and Drew Locke was taken aback. Julian Rochester hit Drew Locke low. DeAndre Walker actually tipped the football out of his hand as Drew Locke was taking the football back, and then it came out. And Drew Locke's arm and and shoulder kind of propelled it forward some, but it was clearly out of his hand. Here's Mark Curls. The quarterback did not have control of the ball when it went forward. Therefore, it is a fumble recovered by Georgia. First down. Third turnover by Missouri this afternoon in this half, and Georgia celebrating on the sideline. They've got 218 to try to get something done offensively. The line of scrimmage is going to be on Georgia's side of the 50. Uh, around the 44, the 45-yard line, DeAndre Baker recovered that fumble, which at the time was just an incomplete forward pass, but he carried out the play, fell on the loose ball, and now it's Georgia's ball at our own 45-yard line. All kinds of time here for the dogs. 2.18 on the clock, three timeouts. Question is, can we get something going here on the offensive side of the ball? Fromm will hand it off. There's something going with Swift. He burst through the hole, just straight ahead power running into Missouri territory at the 45-yard line. Cale Garrett, the middle linebacker with the tackle. 10-yard gain. Georgia goes quick. Second down and actually inches, so not a full 10 yards. We throw it to Miko Hardman. Quick pass out to the right. Tiptoes out of bounds on the sideline. Picks up the first down. Stops the clock at the 40. A 5-yard gain. Joshua Bledsoe, the strong safety, forcing Hardman out of bounds at the Tiger 40-yard line. Riley Ridley threw a great block on a Missouri defender that read that all the way. If not for that block by Riley Ridley, that one either would have been blown up in the backfield or potentially picked off. 
Clock ticking at 145 here in the second quarter. Georgia leads it 20-7, to looking for more here late in the half. Fromm with a play fake, going to go deep, far corner, and he will overthrow everybody. Miko Hardman running into double coverage as the safety uh, shifted over at the 10-yard line. He was covered pretty well by uh, the secondary man, but Fromm's pass went over everybody's head, and the effort to get it to Hardman at the 10 is incomplete. That was AC and Bledsoe in coverage, see. Dogs had exactly what we wanted there. We were manned up on the outside with press coverage over Hardman, so a good release. Hardman would have been off to the races. Fromm just needs a little bit more air under that football. Second down, 10. Ball on the uh, Missouri 40-yard line. Fromm with a play fake and a throw. Tried to force it inside to Akeel Crumpton, but it broken up by Bledsoe, who was uh, shadowing Crumpton right on top of him, able to break up the pass attempt, and it's incomplete. And third down and 10 now for the Dogs at the Missouri 40-yard line. Again, dogs have what we wanted. Press coverage on the outside. Tried to go just a quick slant there to Crumpton. That football, I think, hard to tell from this angle up here in the booth. That ball may have been thrown a hair behind Crumpton. Uh, we're just looking at the replay. Just a good defensive play there. Good defensive play. Dogs third and ten. Two for seven on third down tries here in the half. Gilliard snaps it to Fromm in the shotgun. Hands it off to Swift. Swift runs straight ahead downfield to the 36-yard line. The pickup will be four short of the first down. Tackle made by Adam Sparks, the cornerback. And the Georgia letting the clock tick away as the team out on the field looks to the sidelines. Are they going to go for it? Looks like it. Fourth down and six. Balls on the Tiger 36-yard line. And Missouri wants a timeout. Second charge timeout, Missouri. 30-second timeout. Georgia jumped back into formation, ready to go for it on fourth and six. At the Tiger 36-yard line, and Barry Odom, the head coach for Missouri in his third season, up the sideline to call for a timeout before they could snap the ball. 64 seconds remain in the half. Georgia 20 and Missouri 7. And Nissan knows game day is all about the game-winning drive. So Rogue has available technologies that will help make the day's best drive getting to the stadium. Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. So Georgia huddling up on the far sideline with Coach Kirby Smart and staff. Missouri's already broken out of their defensive huddle. They're back at the line of scrimmage waiting for play to resume. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. So we'll put the offense back out there. Harrion in the backfield with Fromm. Two receivers wide to the left. Tight end is Nauta. He's off to the left. Now he'll shift to the right. Riley Ridley's the receiver on this near side. Missouri jumps off sides on fourth and six. Fromm takes the snap, throws wide to Ridley, but flags down and whistles. Well, their right end was three yards in the backfield before we snapped the football. Great job of hard count usage there by Jake Fromm. Offside, 93 defense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. You know, Scott, Jake struggling a little bit throwing the football today. Six out of 14 with a pick. But just you just see his command of the game and his football IQ on display right there. You get in a fourth and a six situation. Uh, you, you know that, especially when you see them Reset get up the, the game clock to 104. 104 on the game clock, please. You know they've got their ears pinned back and they're coming. Great use of hard count there. We're going to go with a jumbo package, Z. Kendall Baker wearing 42 comes into the ball game. Trey Hill into the ball game as a fullback. From under center, it's fourth and one. Fourth and one on the Missouri 31-yard line. Jumbo, we slide a man in motion, hand it off to Harry, and Harry and hits the hole. I don't think he got there. They stop him at the 31-yard line. They jammed us up at the line of scrimmage. We brought in extra beef with 330-pounder Trey Hill and 305-pounder Kendall Baker, Justin Schaefer, and we still didn't get the first down. We didn't get a yard. We got nothing. They stop us on the 31 and take over on downs. Great penetration there by Missouri. I thought for a second they were lined up in the neutral zone, but no came out. Boy, pretty disappointing there for the Dogs. It really could have gained some separation here from Missouri going into halftime. Looking at the replay, Harrion got hit from the side. 
on the uh, on the stop by uh, Therese Hall, the linebacker. He's the guy that made that play. He came in down the line from the side and was able to stop Harrion for no gain. So first down for Missouri with less than a minute to go from their own 31. Locke will pass. His target is the tight end to the right. It's incomplete. Tried to go to Albert Okui Boonham again. And it's broken up by Tay Crowder for the Bulldogs around the 37-yard line. Incomplete pass stops the clock at 55 seconds remaining in the quarter. Georgia with a 20-7 lead on Missouri, trying to keep the Tiger offense at bay here towards the end of the first half. Empty set for the Tiger offense. Lock in the pocket, being pressured. Ball's up in the air. Is it loose? Is it fumble again? Ball's loose on the ground. There's a pile for it at the 25. And I'm not sure if that was a fumble or an incomplete pass. Everybody jumped on the pile. I think Missouri recovered it. DeAndre Walker forced the loose ball. And I think they're saying that was a fumble. I think it was a fumble, too. No different than the, the last fumble there on Drew Locke. That ball came out of his hand early. And instead of just falling on the football, we tried to scoop it up. Walker forced it. Kevin Pendleton, the left guard, apparently recovered it for Missouri. And now a play is stopped for the moment. Ball's on the 25-yard line. Third down and 16 to go for the Tigers. Just three seconds, two seconds. They were letting the clock melt Play down. Game. Number three, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Tigers just ready to go into the locker room and end this half. Two seconds remain. And, and uh, Missouri penalized for delay of game, so the ball back By on the 20-yard line. Foul that stops the clock with under one minute and the game clock running. It's a 10-second runoff. That is the end of the second period. So you go. Now we go into the locker room, the end of the half on that play. Scott Howard back with you here at Columbia, Missouri for Row Field, Georgia 20, Missouri 7 as we wind down halftime. It's time now for the Northside Impact, sponsored by Northside Hospital Atlanta. We diagnose and treat more new cancer cases than any other hospital in Georgia, providing care at 48 cancer centers. You can learn more at builttobeatcancer.com. Buffalo Wild Wings sponsors our second half adjustments. Buffalo Wild Wings, proud hangout for Georgia Athletics. Wings, beer, Sports. We'll get to some adjustments right after Rodrigo Blankenship kicks it off to start the second half. Blankenship has it teed up on the 35, kicking from right to left here. Bright, beautiful, sunny day in Columbia. Ball going to come down on the 2 to Beatty. Beatty to the 10 to the 15. Beers far side of the field, 20. 25 being chased and shoved out of bounds at the 36-yard line. On the far side of the field, may have been Baker, DeAndre Baker shoving him out of bounds, but a about a 36-yard kickoff return by Tyler Beatty for Missouri. And the Tigers will have the ball first and 10 at the 36-yard line. Z, how about some quick second-half adjustments by Georgia? Well, on the offensive side of the ball, I want to see us throw the football, quick passing game on first down, try to get us in some second medium, second shorts. And once we start to loosen up this this Missouri defense a little bit, they get back into that kind of normal rhythm where we want some balance. I just think we've got to get Jake Fromm into the flow of this football game. Here are the Tigers on offense to start the second half. Lock. Looks to the right. We had that covered with Patrick. He's going to throw it out of bounds. Locke scrambling and just rolling to the right and just dumping the ball over the Missouri bench. He wanted to go in the right flat, but Natrez Patrick wouldn't let him. Tyler Clark with some good pressure, and Locke just had to get rid of it. Well, Natrez Patrick there was actually on a dog. He was coming with pressure. He saw the back slip out of the backfield, peeled off of that pressure into coverage. Excellent play there by Natres. Second and 10 from the 36 for the Tigers. Snap to Locke. He will hand it off. They'll run it straight ahead with Roundtree and not a lot of space there as he may have gotten to the 36 and a half, maybe a half yard gain. It'll be third down for Missouri as we go down to the sidelines. Check in with Chuck Dowdle in the Cook's Pest Control sideline. Yes, yeah, Scott, the, the uh, Tigers get the ball here on that uh, on the kickoff by Georgia. They got to choose that they won that, but you notice the dogs chose so that they'll have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. 
Third down and long as Lott will dump it off. Ball is dropped incomplete by Roundtree. Looked like they were trying to set up a screen on the right, and we kind of blew that up with Jay Hayes, I believe, on the rush of Lock, and he kind of sidearmed that pass, and Roundtree unable to hang on to it. And it's incomplete, and Missouri fails on its first offensive possession of the second half. They go three and out, and they'll put Fatoni out there to punt it away. Good series here with the dogs defensively. Caught a break on that third down play. If it would have been executed, he had a lot of green grass to run into. Hardman to return the punt, catches it, and then drops it at the 18. Picks it back up. He's off to the 25, looking for blockers. He springs free at the 40. He stumbles. Oh, he had one guy to beat at the 42-yard line. After dropping the punt, picking it up on the bounce, he took off and got it back out to the 42-yard line and was just a, a, toe, a toe on the turf away from taking that the rest of the way. 45 yards on the punt by Fatoni. 23-yard return by Miko Hardman. And Georgia on offense now at the 41-yard line. Our own 41, first possession of the second half. 20-7, to seven, Georgia leading early third quarter here in Columbia, Missouri. That's that, that punt return. That's one of those plays as a coach that you're yelling for, then yelling at, then yelling for your player all in one play. <laughs> Here's Fromm with a play fake. Quick throw out to the right to Riley Ridley. Caught by the junior receiver from Coconut Creek, Florida at the 45-yard line. Tackled by Adam Sparks. Gain is four. And it's second and six for the Dogs. Ball right on our 45. We're moving to the left as we view it from the Piedmont Healthcare radio booth here at Faroe Field. Love the play call there by Coach Cheney. You want to get your quarterback into some rhythm. The easiest time so far to throw the football against this Missouri defense has been in first down. Get yourself into second, medium, and short. Going to go to Ridley again, and same result. Ridley catches it. They can't get him on the turf, though, with one guy. He's driving and turning those legs. They couldn't get him down, and he's finally uh, hit by a second defender. Sparks was the primary defender for Missouri and the ball is complete and the pass play uh, comes to a conclusion at the Tiger 48 yard line and the gain is 7. That's a scan of energy first down for the Bulldogs. Quick game again. Just get the chains moving. Get your quarterback into some rhythm here. Dogs in Tiger territory. Now we run it with Swift. Nothing straight ahead. He bounces out to the right. He finds some space. Driving Swift. Running, running. He's got some four or five mustard-colored shirts hanging all over him, and he drives it down to the 41-yard line. Jeremiah Holloman got in there, was driving from behind to keep the pile moving forward for Georgia. Ball will be at the 41 of the Tigers. A seven-yard gain right there on the bounce-out run by DeAndre Swift. And it's second down and three for the Dogs. A great decision there by Swift. He had an opportunity to take it even further outside. Decided to go north and south. Perfect decision. Here's Swift again. Bounces out to the numbers right. To the 40, to the 35, to the 33 before being undercut on the far sideline by the Tigers. Wynn and Cleveland and Gilliard blocking for Swift on that right side run. Tackle was made by Tyree Gillespie, a reserve free safety. That's another scan of energy first down for Georgia. The Dogs moving steadily here down to the Missouri 33-yard line now. Well, this is a good spot in the field to take a shot, too, if you get the right look. Double tight end set here with one receiver left. That's Godwin and one to the right. That's Ridley. Holyfield's in the backfield. Play fake from. He's going to throw deep far sideline. And it's caught at the 14. And nothing but green grass in front of him. Riley Ridley, touchdown. Boy, brought two tight ends in the game. Got one-on-one -on -one outside. Take a shot. That's exactly what we did. A corner route that was poorly played there by Missouri. As soon as they went for the pick and missed it, and we catch the football, it's a waltz into the end zone. Much better start for this Georgia offense coming out of the locker room. Well, as you said, Z, Sparks went for the pick there, and as soon as he failed in that, uh, there was nobody between Ridley and the end zone and 14 yards down the far sideline for the score to jack it up to 26-7. to seven. And here's the point after try by Rodrigo Blankenship. The snap and the hold and the kick is up and good. 27-7. to seven. That touchdown brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. Dogs, success offensively. Our first score uh, touchdown offensively today. It's 27-7. to Dogs lead the Tigers on the Bulldogs Sports Network. 
Uh, no jersey, no shoulder pads, and uh, done for the day. All right, Chuck, tough break for uh, Tyler Simmons. Thank you very much. We have watched Georgia take a 20-point lead here in the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth at Faro Field as Rodrigo Blankenship tees it up and walks it off, preparing to kick away. We'll tell you that Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. Beatty, the deep receiver for Missouri. He's on the north end of the field, standing between the goal line and the one. And Blankenship will kick this one away from him, angling it towards the far right corner. It's going to bounce on the two and tumble into the end zone for the touchback. Kicking it to the left into that, uh, well, there's not much wind, at least according to the flags there, but Rodrigo hasn't been able to get the normal boom that we've seen uh, this season as he's drilled them through the end zone left and right until today. He's had a couple of returns on us today. Well, just going in this one direction, as he's kicking to his left, or, or from where we're sitting in the booth to the left, the wind is picking up now. You can see the flags blowing pretty briskly briskly in so smart decision there to kick it away from the returner first time he's done that all year and perfectly placed 25 yard line is where missouri will start this possession trailing 27 to 7 snap to lock in the shotgun play fake to crockett in the pocket now he leaks out to the left he's looking he looked he wanted to pitch it now he's on the sidelines takes kind of a half-hearted hit from Jawan taylor and tumbles to the turf he was not really sure what he wanted to do or where he wanted to go with the football. He took off running, and it paid off. He got 10 yards and a first down. A really nice coverage there downfield by Georgia defensively. Not willing to peel off of any of the receivers. They know that Locke throwing the football, even on the move, can be dangerous. First and 10 on the 35 after a 10-yard scramble. Locke, play fake, sidearm, slings it, throws it to Johnson. Grab him around the arm with J.R. Reed at the 45. He keeps running up to the 49-yard line. Jonathan Johnson on the reception. Tyreek McGee and Reed on the stop. Gain was 14, first and 10, Missouri. Locked to throw. Comes to the right side again. This time he'll hit Nate Brown. Richard LeCount will jump on his back and ride him to the ground at the 39-yard line. Missouri moving quickly, suddenly. And we brought corner fire there, left the receiver completely wide open, never fully got over the top to cover up the blitzing cornerback. 12-yard pickup, handoff to Crockett, I believe, bounce it out to the left. And Crockett across the 35 down to the 33-yard line, a gain of six. Jawan Taylor, DeAndre Baker on the stop as Georgia substitutes defensively. Taylor, one of the players heading to the sideline for the Dogs. Get Patrick back in the ball game. Missouri's moving steadily down the field, almost to the Dogs' 32-yard line. First and 10. No, excuse me, second and four. Second and four on this snap to Locke in the shotgun. He'll give it to Crockett with blockers. Runs in there behind the big right tackle. Paul Adams and Crockett down the field inside the 30 to the 28. Patrick the stop for the Georgia defense. And it's a first down for the Tigers as they steadily move in a hurry. They'll keep it on the ground. or This time they'll run it to the right side, trying to angle outside the tackle. Dogs defense it well with Marshall. And Tyreek McGee, they stop Crockett at the 27. This Missouri offense, a completely different o- offense when they get a good positive play on first down and it opens up their entire playbook. They have struggled when they've been in second long and third long situations today. Their only score came late in the first quarter. They run straight ahead with Crockett again. He runs into a crowd at the 24-yard line, some fighting and legs driving and Still trying to extend the play is Demarie Crockett. And we'll finally we'll blow the whistle at the 23-yard line. Straight ahead power running. Daquan Hawkins Muckle leading Georgia's defense on the stop. Third down and five now for the Tigers. Just one for seven on third down today. They're on the Georgia 23-yard line. They work between the hash marks, moving to the right. Locks in the shotgun. Crockett off to his left. Lock will throw wide open. In the zone is Jonathan Johnson makes the catch at the 14, tackled at the 11 by McGee and Reed. The dogs were in two-man there. We just lost 
Lost him. Quick snap to lock. Play fake. Throws it towards the end zone. Almost intercepted. Richard LeCount jumped in the air and batted it almost to himself, but couldn't reel it in after he tipped the ball up in the air. Hits the turf incomplete. That was almost a huge defensive play for Georgia, as it was Richard LeCount with a batted ball and an incompletion. Trying to go to Nate Brown on a quick slant into the end zone. Boy, great job there by LeCount as he came up. That really wasn't on a blitz, but getting up for run support. Read the eyes very nicely and drew lock. Dogs try to defend Missouri as they run the 10th play of this possession, one that started back on the 25-yard line. Lock with a play fake, throws to the opposite angle, far side, far corner. It's incomplete. Lock slings it out of bounds in the back left corner. Jonathan Johnson again the target. We haven't heard much of anything as J.R. Reed was in coverage, much of anything at all from the top receiver in the conference, Emmanuel Hall today. He's out there, but... He hasn't been targeted a whole lot. A lot of that has to do with, I'm guessing here, is number 18 for Georgia, DeAndre Baker. Yeah, no question. Whoever's been on top of him, just been draped all over him with that white jersey. He has yet to catch a pass today. Third and 10 for Missouri. The ball's on the Georgia 11-yard line. Snap back to Locke. He stands. Got a little bit of time. Here comes pressure. Clark on the backside. Locke slings it. Now here comes a pa- or flag after the play has ended. Back where Locke was. The pass was incomplete. Jonathan Johnson was the target again, but an incomplete pass and a flag. Ledbetter and Clark, one of them may be flagged for a late hit or roughing the passer or something in that vicinity. Well, I'm sure that's what it's going to be. Kirby Smart, as soon as the flag came out, just fell on the ground. And discuss. Or maybe they'll pick it up. Here's Mark Curls, the referee. Personal foul, run for the passer, number 13 defense. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot, first down. That's huge right there. So goal to go now for Missouri Tigers as they mark it off. Put the ball just outside the Georgia five-yard line. When they finally put it down, the center judge will put the ball on the turf field here at Faro Field. Working between the hash marks, Tigers with an opportunity. They trail 27-7, to but first and goal from just outside Georgia's five-yard line. Here's Crockett, threads our defense. One run into the end zone, touchdown. Well, middle mistake there by the dogs cost us on that roughing the passer. Drew Locke and let the football go. Ledbetter just reached his arm out and pushed him to the ground. But it was enough to get the flag. DeMarie Crockett on that play. Z just running straight ahead, lowering his shoulders, running through the line of scrimmage, broke one arm tackle, and then it was easy five yards straight ahead into the end zone for the score. So their second touchdown of the day comes with 7.50 to go in the third quarter. And here's Tucker McCann for the point after try. And it is up and good, and it's 27 to 14. Timeout with 7.50 to play. Third quarter here in Columbia, Missouri. Georgia 27, Missouri 14. Back after this, Bulldogs Sports Network. And we're glad to have you with us here on a beautiful sunny day in Columbia, Missouri. Is this the, this is the first day of autumn, isn't it? I think it is. Feels like it. Uh, well, I think it is, yeah. On the calendar, it is. And weather-wise, it is. Play here. In uh, middle Missouri, Georgia 27, Missouri 14. Better buckle up because Sirius XM is zero to everything in 150 channels. You get commercial free music, entertainment, comedy, news, and coverage of every major sport, including Georgia Bulldogs football. So tune in and let's ride. Here's McCann with the kick away for the Tigers. A high end over end kick will come down about three yards deep to Hartman. He's going to run it out to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25. Outside the numbers, far side and upended around the 33 or the 34-yard line. Hartman tried to deke him a little bit in the end zone. He didn't reach his arms up to grab the football until the very last second. And it was a nice return. Kamari Thompson with the stop on special teams for Missouri. And Hartman's return, 34 yards, about four yards deep out of the end zone. So Georgia first and 10 at its own 34. Dogs did a last, uh, a very nice job last series of getting Jake Fromm into a bit of a rhythm. Three for three, a couple of quick hitches, and then obviously the deep one. 
Yeah, 33 yarder to Ridley for a touchdown. Here's speed sweep to Miko Hardman coming this way and cutting up field at the 35. Hardman will be stopped at the 39 by Joshua Bledsoe, the strong safety. And the gain is five at 39 yard line. It'll be second down five for the dogs. Georgia works between the hash marks, moving to the left. Clock ticking in the third quarter, 7-18, now less than that. Fromm's numbers today, 9 for 17, 110 yards, a touchdown and a pick. He'll throw here, high to the near sideline, leaping in the air. It's Holloman. He twists away. He'll be gone. Touchdown. He twisted away from the defender around the 35 to Marcus Acey and left him in his wake and right down the near sideline for the long touchdown. Boy, you're, it's going to be hard to see a better catch and then run after the catch than that one. Back shoulder fade against press coverage. Holloman goes up, snatches the football away, Boy, somehow stays in bounds. Unbelievable. 61 yards on the score. Missouri somehow ended up with the ball and was running down the other way well after the play, but the officials are like, give me the ball back. It was a Georgia touchdown. Well, they just saw the replay. Holloman may have dropped that football before he crossed the goal line. Not again. The fans think they showed it on the replay. The fans think that has happened, but they boned the play dead. As we're looking at a replay... On the video board. No, he was across. The ball drops and it lands in the end zone from the replay that we just looked at. But we've got to stop that. The ruling on the field of touchdown is under further review. Yeah, hold on to the football and give it back to the official. That's the best way to, to determine that. Now they're going to have to go back and take a look at it on what was a, a terrific offensive play. Now they're and, and clearly a touchdown, or at least should have been. Now the officials, Mark Curl and his crew, are going to take a look at it in the booth with a replay and in collaboration with the SEC headquarters in Birmingham. And this play under review is brought to you by Barbasol, offering you a chance to score big when you join the new Barbasol Shave Club. Grab your premium starter kit for just $6.99 today with code FOOTBALL at Barbasol.com. Barbasol, game on. Have you seen a replay yet that well, I, uh, indicates I, I haven't seen that overturns one. what the call is? I have not seen one that overturns it. But he put the football into his right hand, and his right hand was swinging backwards. It was. It is close. I think the play is going to stand because there's not an angle that is good enough that we've seen at least that we've seen that, that is enough to overturn it. There doesn't appear to be an, uh, a goal line camera so Thank that you goodness. can see whether or not the, the ball broke the plane before it was dropped out of his hands or not. And they have called a touchdown on the field. And as we said, Missouri had picked it up and a guy was running down the field and they were blowing the play dead. So, you know, there's a lot to sort out here for, for this replay uh, collaboration with Mark Curls and his staff here, his crew here, and the uh, replay official who is Stan Murray up here in the booth and the guys in Birmingham. Let's go down to the Cook's Pest Control sideline with Chuck Tattle. Chuck? Well, I, I, and right in line with what you guys are saying, uh, we're watching the same replay down here on the Georgia bench, and there's a lot of angst down here too uh, of what should not be right now because this that that was a no doubter it, it almost looks like he let the football go before he crossed the goal line his momentum carries it in for sure again i don't know if there's enough here after the overturn review, the ruling on the field stands touchdown thank you oh uh, and not because <laughs> I, th I think Stand. what we were just talking about, yeah, not uh, because they didn't have a uh, a clear camera angle to overturn what they uh, had called on the field as the play was developing and as it happened. I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a period at next practice oh, of guys holding on to the football, <laughs> crossing the goal line. You're going to do 10 100-yard sprints and hand it to me. I'm standing under the goal post. Come give it to me. Right. <laughs> Dogs will go for two. After that Southwest Airlines touchdown by J.J. Holloman, 61 yards on the touchdown. Fromm will throw it. It will look more like a lateral to Brian Harrion on the near side. He shoved out of bounds at the two. It looked like Harrion caught it around the six or so. 
And it appeared to be a lateral from Fromm as he threw it out to the left side, and the two-point conversion fails as Harrion couldn't get across the goal line on the two-point try. So Georgia, with that long touchdown pass, jacks up the lead to 33-14 to with 6.59 to go here in quarter number three. <laughs> Good. So, yeah, some tenuous times for Georgia after a great play that should have been a cause for celebration. And we had to go to the replay booth and hold our breath and just hope that we got the six points. 61 yards on the score from Fromm to Holloman. The scoring drive was two plays, 66 yards. Only took 45 seconds. That's the Georgia Medals drive summary. From a doghouse to a dog's house, Georgia Medals has got you covered. Boy, you're right. A, a time of, of celebration just got turned into angst. I still don't think the sideline has recovered. I know the booth hasn't recovered yet. <laughs> Well, we saw we saw DeAndre Baker do something similar in the South Carolina game after he had picked off the pass, and instead of a 56-yard interception return for a touchdown, it, uh, he dropped the ball at the one-yard line. It tumbled in the end zone, and Jawan Taylor fortunately picked up the football for the touchdown, so he got credit for the score as uh, Blankenship kicks it into the end zone. It's caught by uh, Tyler Beatty for the touchback. And Missouri will start again on offense at the 25-yard line. But that's that's too much stress for an old man like me up here. Well, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah, you put on top of that, Hondo just mentioned even the last drive that Missouri had where they score the, the middle mistake of pushing the quarterback completely out of his hand. No need to even touch him, lay a finger on him, and you, you shove him and push him, and that leads, when you had stopped him, leads to a touchdown. So a couple of mental mistakes there. One doesn't cost the dogs. The other one did, uh, but, boy, just too much. Here's Locke on a shotgun snap. Missouri will run it with Damari Crockett, the junior from Little Rock, Arkansas, running well today. He runs in there behind the right side of the line of scrimmage. From the 25 to the 32 for seven yards, tackled by Jawan Taylor and J.R. Reed. That yeah, Crockett, 66 yards on 12 carries. They'll give it to him again. Same spot on the field. The result not the same. We jam it up just past the line of scrimmage or maybe right on top of it at the 30, 32 yard line. Julian Rochester gumming up the works at nose tackle in the middle for Georgia. They put the ball between the 32 and the 33. And it'll be a second down and short, or third down, rather, third down and two for the Missouri Tigers. Missouri, two out of eight on third down today. And they were over 50%. Ball batted down, almost picked off. DeAndre Walker jumped in the air from this left edge and batted down the pass. It almost came down in the arms of Jawan Taylor as the Dogs had good defensive pressure on lock. Batted pass interception, almost picked off. That would have been interesting. I'm not sure how many batted balls we've had today, but that's three or four where we've been able, if not getting to the quarterback, been able to get our arms up and, and get high into the air to knock the football down. That is just a sign of a well-coached football team. For Tony to kick it away. Dogs bring four after the punt. It is away. We run away from it. Let it bounce on the 22. Bounce high in the air. Now takes a good Tiger roll down inside the 10, rolling down inside the 8 to the 7. Ouch. Akeel Crumpton was the deep receiver. And Kirby Smart is the first one out to meet him as he comes off the field. Betty, right on the numbers. That's one you've got to go up and catch. That football wasn't hit poorly enough not to go up and make a fair catch and chase that one down. We lost probably 15, 20 yards of field position there. 60-yard punt by Corey Fatoni and the dogs in a hole on our own seven-yard line. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. Georgia 33, Missouri 14. Fromm in the shotgun. We'll try to run it out of a hole with Holyfield. He takes the handoff, looking for anything he can find straight ahead, and there's just not a whole lot there. He got a yard, maybe a little more than that, across the eight before being uh, stopped by the Missouri defense. They're all in goal today from head to toe just about. The socks and the shoes are black, but everything else is gold. Georgia in road white, silver pants, red helmets, and leading 33-14 as we get late here in the third quarter. 
Fromm under center will hand off to Holyfield. He's patient. He picks the hole right side of the line of scrimmage. Runs in there behind Cleveland and Wilson. And he'll be up across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Garrett, the linebacker, and Hall, the linebacker, on the stop for the Missouri defense. But it's third and a yard for the Dogs. We've got to go to the 17. We've got it on the 16. That patience that you mentioned paid off. He was able to get behind Solomon Kinley and Ben Cleveland there for that nice pickup. Now Holyfield, the lone setback as Fromm works under center. We bring Ridley in motion and tight on the right edge. Hand off Elijah Holyfield. They hit him behind the line, knock him back. A shoe goes flying for Missouri's defense. Nate Anderson, first contact along with Brandon Lee, Cale Garrett. They got tremendous penetration in that Georgia offensive line. And Holyfield got hit two yards deep in the backfield, tried to spin away from it, but loses yards on third down and short. We've had terrible luck with that all day long. Uh, it's just great penetration there from Missouri. It's just all-out effort at the point of attack there. Next time we get third and short, don't be surprised if we do something to try to get on the perimeter. So we lost a couple back to the 14. Now here's Camarda to punt it away from the goal line. High, long, beautiful hanging spiral. Jonathan Johnson, he called for the fair catch at the 40. 46-yard high hanging punt, no return. Tigers ball when we come back. It's Georgia 33, Missouri 14 with three. Georgia leads Missouri 33 to 14 from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio booth here at Faro Field. The Champions for Charity game is on every time we win. Camp Twin Lakes, the Salvation Army and Children's Healthcare of Atlanta win because Walton Gas will donate $1,000 to these local charities. And for every bowl game the Dogs win, Walton Gas will donate $5,000. Everyone is a winner with Walton Gas. Comcast Business Scoreboard, North Carolina Pitt tied at 28 in the third. Ole Miss 7-7 with Kent State in the third. Michigan clobbering Nebraska 30-7 in the fourth. Notre Dame 35, Wake Forest 13. They are in the third on the Comcast Business Scoreboard. And the Braves are leading the Phillies 4-0 in the sixth inning with a chance to clinch the division today. Missouri will throw with Jonathan Johnson. Makes the catch around the 47, spins away from the defender, and then gets into Georgia territory. Tackled by uh, Richard LeCount at the Bulldog 46-yard line. The gain is 14 and a first down for the Tigers. Just a quick out route from that inside slot position. We got out, out of position and took leverage outside. Here comes Locke. We've got pressure coming. He slings it to this side. Oh, goodness. It was almost caught on the ground by the Missouri player and then batted up in the air, and LeCount almost picked it off out of the tip. Georgia's picked it up with Cox and is running down the field. No whistle has blown. Cox has got the ball. The ball's out again. Now it comes out at the 15-yard line. It looks like Missouri may have dived on the football. They've got a lot to sort out there. I thought it was an incomplete pass back here. Uh, at, at the original part of the play, but the officials just let it, kept it playing out. And I don't know if the ball ever hit the turf. The ruling on the field is a backward pass recovered by Georgia, fumbled by Georgia, recovered by Missouri, first and 10 Missouri. I don't think that was a lateral. It didn't look like a lateral to me. And are they going to review that? Well, they've got Missouri with the football all the way back at the 16 yard line. This play is under further review. Yeah, I mean, that should just go back to be an incomplete pass. That's all that is. Not even close. That's three or four yards uh, ahead of where it was. That the receiver had to back up to go get it, but clearly that ball was thrown forward. And this play under review is brought to you by Barbasol, offering you a chance to score big when you join the new Barbasol Shave Club. Grab your premium starter kit for just $6.99 today with the code FOOTBALL. Your nominations at George After further review, the ruling is the first pass was forward and incomplete. It'll be second and ten on the 46-yard line. Reset the game clock to 328. 328 on the game clock, please. Oh, so they had 16 seconds back onto the play clock, the game clock. And it'll be second down and ten for the Tigers, as you heard Mark Curls, our referee, explain just seconds ago. They're on the Georgia 46-yard line. Ball on the middle of the big Missouri Tiger logo in the middle of the field that stretches from about the 39 to the 39. Locks back in the shotgun. The center, Tristan Colon-Castillo, up over the football. Snaps it back 
to Locke. He's got time. He fires incomplete at the 38-yard line. Intended target, Emmanuel Hall, right on him, number 18, DeAndre Baker, breaking up the pass play. Hall doesn't have any catches today. In fact, the top two receivers for each team coming into this ball game. Here are the numbers compiled by Jay Black. Hall, no catches today. Miko Hardman, one catch for six yards, one run for five yards. And you know the answer for Missouri is number 18, DeAndre Baker, just continuing to play at an exceptionally high level. Three receivers to the left, one to the right for Missouri. He's driving to the right. Quick throw by Lott. Back shoulder fade is caught but out of bounds. No, they're going to say complete at the 30, Nate Brown. They say he caught the ball. I thought he was out of bounds. They were really hugging the sideline over here with uh, Eric Stokes in coverage. The completion is to the 30. It's a 14-yard uh, Make it a 16-yard gain for Missouri and a first down. Now they run through the line on the right edge from the 25 down inside the 20 to the 18. Reed and Crowder had to make the stop on Tyler Beatty, who burst through the line on the right side. Another first down for Missouri. They explode down to the Georgia 17-yard line. Locke being chased. He'll have to whip it out of bounds on the right side now, being chased by Jawan Taylor. Number the seven was in the air of the pass. There is no foul for intentional grounding. Second down. And Locke, the senior, Taylor and Walker with pursuit on Drew Locke, the quarterback. And the 6'4 senior had to run for his life and just sling it out of bounds. Incomplete. Stops the clock with 2.51 to go third quarter. Tigers with the ball on our 17-yard line. Like they were stalling around midfield, and they suddenly hit a couple of plays and inside the 20 down in the red zone. Snap to lock. He's on the 26. Fires hard down the middle. Caught on a crossing route at the 12. And Jonathan Johnson fighting for extra yardage after contact. Hit by Stokes and then brought down by LeCount. He was fighting through the contact of Eric Stokes. And down at the 6-yard line is Johnson. That's a gain of 11. It's goal to go now for the Tigers. Here they come. Hand off Beatty. Beatty in the pile moving inside the five down to the three yard line running off the right edge. Second and goal from the three. A pile of Georgia players making the stop including Daquan Hawkins Muckle and Julian Rochester. Both offenses starting to find their footing a little bit here in this third quarter and you can just see how explosive Missouri can be. We've held them in check for most of the game, but once they get rolling, they've got a lot of different weapons and a lot of different ways to attack them. Grant, Barnett, and Clark check back into the ball game for the Georgia defense. Second and goal from the Georgia three. Missouri trying to tighten it up a little bit. Locking the shotgun. Handoff running straight ahead into the end zone. Touchdown. Is that Beatty or Crockett? That was Beatty, the little guy, the freshman, 5'9 from Memphis, Tennessee. Running between the tackles. And now it's 33 to 20 with the point after pending. Boy, just huge gaping hole right there in between the tackles for Georgia. We've seen it happen on, a, on several different occasions. Missouri looks like they want to go for two. They'll keep the offense out there. It's a 13 point Georgia lead at this stage with 146 to go in the third quarter. They'll put the ball on the three between the hash marks. Georgia makes a late defensive substitution. And a two-point conversion try here for the Tigers. Locke looks left, long snap count. And now flag for too much time delay of game. Offense, five-yard penalty. It's still a try. So a five-yard penalty called on Missouri. And they'll move the ball back to the eight. And the offense remains out there. Barry Odom looks out from the sideline, the head coach for the Tigers. Drew Locke looking to the near sideline. They'll bring in Blanton, the tight end. One substitution. They swap Johnson for Blanton. And they'll try a two-point conversion attempt from the eight-yard line. Shotgun snap to Locke. He backs up on the 16. Hard throw into the end zone, and it's caught by Okui Boonham for the two-point conversion. The big tight end, a big target, 6'5", 255. 
There were a couple of white shirts around him in the end zone, but Locke muscled it in there with that rifle arm. Reed and McGee were around him, but the tight end makes the catch for the two-point conversion, and it's an 11-point Georgia lead now, 33-22. to 22. Uh, Double slant routes there by Missouri and Albert O. Able, nice little outside head fake, and able to find just a little bit of a seam. As you mentioned, coverage very good there, but Drew Locke found the one spot to fit that one in. Three-yard touchdown by Tyler Beatty. Kept a nine-play, 60-yard scoring drive for the Tigers. And with 106 seconds left in the third quarter, it's an 11-point game. So a two-score game, theoretically. Southwest Airlines, low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. Touchdown, two-point conversion, field goal, you're tied. You have that scenario. Kickoff by McCann, taken by Hardman in the end zone. Straight ahead to the 10, to the 15, hit at the 20, still upright. Knocked from behind, forward to the 24-and-a-half yard line. It may bring it back a yard or so. Fromm in the shotgun with Swift in the backfield. 33-22, to 22. Dogs at the 23-yard line. Fromm with time in the pocket, throws it far to the right side and out of reach, trying to go to Hardman. Ball lands out of bounds on the Georgia sideline, and the Bulldogs have a player shaken up. That's Big Ben Cleveland laying on his back, staring at the sky right now. He is not moving, except for his arms. He is not moving his legs at all. Cleveland will slide his helmet off. And he'll be aided by four medical trainers for the Bulldogs football team. Clock stops with 1.33 to go in the third quarter. It'll help Cleveland sit up, still on the turf, but sitting up right now. He was just laying flat on his back, not moving his legs. We've already lost Tyler Simmons for the day. We've had some problems with uh, Tyler Campbell as well. Did he ever come back into the ball game? He, I know he was in and out. I'm not sure if he's out for he, good He came right in now. and then, then back out. And now Cleveland shaken up with Georgia leading 33-22. to 22. And dog fans, whether your favorite seat is right on the 50-yard line or comes with a bird's-eye view, head to StubHub and grab 100% verified tickets so you know you'll get in. StubHub has been getting fans into the game for over 17 years and is the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Georgia Bulldogs. StubHub, be there. Cleveland assisted up to his feet by fellow lineman Lamont Gilliard, but it's going to be a slow aided walk off the field for Cleveland. Some sort of a uh, lower leg injury, it would appear. He's being assisted by two trainers. One of them is Ron Corson, the director of medical athletic training at Georgia. He's off to Cleveland's left. He's kind of wrapped around a guy to the right, too. It's a slow, long walk to the medical tent on the Georgia sideline. And checking into the ball game will be Justin Schaefer at right guard. Wilson will stay at right tackle, but Schaefer in at right guard now. Gilliard the center, Kenley the left guard, and Mays is the left tackle. So we're down two starting linemen today, Thomas and now Cleveland. Second down and 10 for the Dogs. The ball's on our 23-yard line. Georgia with an 11-point lead, 33-22. Handoff Swift. He's got space, 25-30. Near sideline. They grab him by the jersey. Cuts loose, 35. Jumps up in the air to jump over a man and will be down right there on the near sideline. That's a Bulldog first down brought to you by Scana Energy. Swift with a nice run to the near side up to the 35-yard line. A gain of 12 for the Dogs offense. And that gets the clock moving again. Good job on the left side of the line by Solomon Kinley and Cade Mays there. A lot of room to run for DeAndre Swift. Bright sunshine here in Columbia, Missouri. Balls on the 35 for Georgia. Fromm in the shotgun. Handoff Swift. Runs behind the block of Wilson. And the hole closes in a hurry after about a three-yard gain for the sophomore from Philadelphia, DeAndre Swift. He'll spot it down on the 38-yard line. Three-yard pickup. It'll be second down and seven. Pretty steady diet right now. Single safety, press man-to-man -man on the 
uh, away on the, on the boundary side of the formation. Right now, Missouri's got all 11 guys in the box. Holyfield checks in. Play fake by Fromm. Fromm fires. Caught by Godwin near sideline at the 46. He tries to spin away from the defender, Aaron Adam Sparks, rather, who makes the tackle uh, at the 46-yard line. But it's enough for a Scana Energy first down at the 46. The gain is eight. And that may be the last play of the quarter. I believe it will. Just a handful of seconds remain in quarter number four. And we'll go to the final 15 minutes. End of the third quarter. Tiv line is Gilliard, Schaefer, and Kenley are the guards. Mays and Wilson are the tackles. Replacing Cleveland, who Chuck just told you was carted off to the locker room. Godwin is a receiver out to the left. Two receivers to the near side. That's Ridley and Hardman in the slot. Tight end is in the ball game. Isaac Naughton and in the backfield. It's Harry. Fromm going to take the snap, roll out right, go deep. There's Hardman wide open. Catched it at the – he caught it at the 15 and waltzes into the end zone. He caught it right on his hip at the 15-yard line. Had to be a blown coverage. He was wide open and nobody near him as he covered the final 15 yards in a slight jog into the end zone. He did not drop the ball at the goal line. That is a touchdown. <laughs> So the coaching has already started not to drop the football at the goal line, that's for sure. What a well-designed football play. You move the entire pocket to the right. You throw a post back going away from where you've got all of that motion going. And, and it was indeed a busted coverage. Left Nicole Hardman running absolutely wide open. 54 yards on the touchdown by Fromm. And this place is just deathly quiet now. Here on a bright sunny day in Columbia, Missouri, the touchdown brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares from Atlanta to over 90 destinations you love. 40 to 22 is our new score. Aiding in that busted coverage. I'm not going anywhere. A- aiding in that busted, busted coverage what was a great move by Miko, a little out and up move. And then with all of that motion coming right at the, the cornerback that had coverage on Miko, just froze him right in his tracks. Five plays, 77 yards on the drive, 54 yard touchdown pass from Fromm to Hardman. And that's your Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. Let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification, Bulldogs Sports Network. Blankenship to kick it away for the dogs. Beatty is the deep receiver, stands on the one. Hot Rod's kick high end over end, angling towards the far corner. Will land in the end zone about seven or eight yards deep. Bounce a couple of times and be whistled as a touchback. And Missouri will drag their offensive behinds back out to the 25-yard line. Just when they get close, then Georgia just pulls away again. It's an 18-point dogs lead with 14.52 to go. Hardman has scored a touchdown now in five consecutive games for Georgia. And he showed his ability to be a breakaway player with a 54-yard touchdown catch just seconds ago to put Georgia up 40-22. to The Dogs with at least 40 points in all four games thus far this season. First and 10 at the 25 for Missouri. Locke's been in the shotgun all day long. He'll stay there now. He stands on the 20. Here comes pressure from behind by Patrick. He throws. Locke gets it away. And jumping in the air and making a nice sideline catch is the tight end, Okui Boonham. Eric Stokes was trying to cover the big guy, but he had a little bit of leverage. And Locke was, could feel Natrez Patrick just bearing down on him as he was releasing that football. But it's a 16-yard gain and a first down for the Tigers up to the 41. Well, they move Albert, Albert O all over the field. And he is a mismatch nightmare. They faked the pitch forward and hand it off to the back, Beatty. He runs at left tackle. On to the logo, across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Taylor and Reed, the stop for the Georgia defense. Five-yard pickup, second down and five for Missouri. They're trying to move quickly. They're down 18 points. Clock moving as we near 14 minutes to go in the contest. We're in the fourth quarter. Line of scrimmage, the Tiger 46. Lock a couple of steps up, barks at the line of scrimmage. 
Now back in the shotgun, takes the snap on his 41. He'll hand it off to Beatty, angling this side. Can't get to the corner, knocked out of bounds by DeAndre Baker as he approaches the midfield stripe. In fact, that's where he knocked him out of bounds, just a shoulder butt right into the sideline at the 50-yard line. The gain is four, and it'll be third and a yard for the Tigers from the 50-yard line. They've stuffed us a couple of times on third, fourth, and short. Let's see if we can give them a taste of their own medicine here. Tigers three for 10 on third down tries today. Well below their 52, 53% conversion rate this season. Glock with a play fake. Pressure coming on him. Try to set up a pass, throw it to the left side. Wanted to go to Kendall Blanton all by himself. Locke ends up on the seat of his pants after DeAndre Walker finished him off back there. The throw was not near the intended target, and now it's fourth down and one. So they did stop him on third. Now they'll have to stop him on fourth. Missouri doesn't have an answer for number 15 on our side. He has just wreaked havoc all afternoon. He's been in the backfield a lot. And we don't have... Well, we have two sacks. I think Walker's got them both, actually. I was going to say we don't have a lot of sacks, but we do have a couple. On fourth and one, they throw it and convert. They get it to Blanton on the left side. He jumps in the air to try to ride over the tackler, and he ends up going for a ride to the 39-yard line. They got the first down on fourth and one to Blanton to the 39. The gain is 11 yards. Missouri continues to move. Lock hands off to Beatty. Breaks the tackle. He got through Taylor and Patrick, believe it or not, and kept his feet and brought down by Rochester at the 31-yard line. That shouldn't happen. Now, well, Beatty run it hard before that carry. Seven carries for 32 yards. You can tack another eight or nine on top of that. Beatty, 5'9", 190. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> He's... He shouldn't run through two of our linebackers. They'll keep it on the ground with Beatty again. This time we eat him up at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Clark, DeAndre Walker, stop him for no gain at the 32. It'll be second down there. Third down, correction. It is third down and four to go. Ball is on Georgia's 32-yard line. Tigers moving to our left as we view it. Lock trying to redirect some traffic here with the play clock at 12 seconds. He's got time. He's got his guys where he wants them. And now Missouri, I believe, will call a timeout. First charge timeout, Missouri. The Tigers take a time. We will, too. 11.59 to go in the ball game. Georgia 40, Missouri 22 on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Here's with the ball. Here's we play in the fourth quarter. 11.59 to go in the game. Georgia 40, Missouri 22. And the uh, Tigers have moved the ball to the Georgia 33-yard line. And it's third down and about four yards to go for the Tigers. They bring the tight end in motion. He stops at the left edge, goes back the other way. They fake a toss to the left and throw it to the tight end to the right. And he's open in the flat, and he's got a little bit of running room. Okui Boonham going to make the grab and chased out of bounds at the 22-yard line. The game was 11, maybe 12. Now seven catches on the afternoon for Okoe Boonham. And they've got the ball at the 22. Big hole right side for Tyler Beatty. He runs through it. We hit him at the 14-yard line. Now whistles. Uh, we've got a man hobbling off. That's Rochester now. He gets to the sideline, hobbling severely off to the right side. The whistle blew really before the tackle was finished, but Missouri with the ball at the 14-yard line. Second down and short for the Tigers. Locke hands it off to Beatty. Beatty runs straight ahead into the line of scrimmage and into a pile of white shirts. Uh, he only needed to get to the 12 for the first down, and I believe he did. Let's see where they spot the football and get everybody out of the pile. And it's down to the 11. Michael Barnett made the tackle, or at least one guy that got a piece of it. So it's first and 10 from the Georgia 11 now. As Crockett checks into the ball game, a tailback. Damari Crockett takes the fake. Lock will keep it and run. And into the end zone touchdown. He split two defenders at the goal line. Lock with a beautiful play fake to Crockett. And he covered the final 11 yards all on his own. Touchdown for the Tigers quarterback. And that tightens it up again. It's 40 to 28. 11 yard touchdown run for Missouri. 
Well, what was all defense in the first half has turned into all offense here in the second half. Missouri now 372 yards on the afternoon. Dogs 357. What might be starting to take its toll on this Georgia defense, already 76 plays for Missouri to Georgia's 47. Yeah, that's uh, that's a tremendous disadvantage for the Georgia defense as the point after try by McCann is good. And it's 40 to 29. The lead cut back to 11 with 10.47 to go in this contest. I think we still got a lot of football remaining in this one, at least by the looks of this second half. I don't think there's any question about it. Dogs have got to keep putting points on the board. We haven't seemed to been able to conjure up an answer for what Mizzou's doing offensively right now. Be nice to see the dogs just go on a, a time consuming, grind it out kind of drive like we've seen us do so often. But really at the forefront of our mind is how do we get points back on the board? Missouri and Georgia in a slugfest here in the second half. Missouri's actually outscored the Bulldogs by two, 22 to 20, here in the third and fourth quarters. Tigers will tee it up, kick it away with Tucker McCann, 6'2 junior kicker from O'Fallon, Illinois. And the deep receiver in the end zone is Miko Hardman. And Brian Harrion stands up on the six. McCann has the okay to kick away, and he'll boom it towards the far right corner. Hardman lets it bounce a yard deep in the end zone, catches it on the touchback. bounce, and quickly takes a knee for the touchback. Dogs will have it on the 25-yard line. You can schedule your next visit with the new online booking tool at piedmont.org forward slash UGA. Piedmont Healthcare, the official health care provider of the Georgia Bulldogs. Yes, nothing would... Uh, soothe the dogs pains and woes right now than a nice long time consuming offensive drive with 10 47 to go and the score 40 to 29 georgia but you gotta possess the football hold on to it grind out some first downs because missouri has quick scoring capability handoff Holyfield bounces outside 30 35 runs over a man at the 41 he hangs on enough to get him down to the turf however as he ran through Khalil Oliver the free safety and fell forward to the 44 yard line a gain of 19 on the run by the junior Holyfield good start there by the dogs right over the backs of Solomon Kenley big block there Lamont Gilliard another good block by him And the clock consumption begins for Georgia here. Working the play clock down towards 10 seconds. Holyfield stays in the ball game. Fromm in the shotgun. Two receivers right, one to the left. Give it to Elijah. Runs in there behind Wilson. Two gold shirts going to drive him in the opposite direction. Walter Palmore leading the way. Driving Holyfield to the left at the 46-yard line. It's a two-yard gain still. And the clock continues to move. Under 10 minutes to go. And the focus can't quite yet just be on milking this clock. It's still nope. got to be on on running your offense, putting points on the on the board. You can chew up some clock. You don't have to be in a hurry by any stretch of the imagination. But it's more than just eating the clock up right now. Hardman, Holloman, and Ridley on the right side for Georgia. We run it with Holyfield. He's got running room between the tackles, and he works his way downfield into Missouri territory to the 35-yard line, kind of slanting and sliding through. Brandon Lee and Khalil Oliver finally made the stop at the 35, and the gain is 19 and another first down for Georgia. The dogs moving steadily and somewhat quickly here on this possession. Wilson and Schaefer on the right side of that offensive line opening up a seam and a bit of a daylight for Elijah Holyfield as Brian Harrion checks into the ballgame now in the backfield. Those three receivers go to the far side on this play. Snap to Fromm, hands it off to Harrion. He runs at left guard and works his way downfield close to the 31-yard line. Should be a four-yard pickup. Lee, the linebacker, and Nate Anderson, defensive end. He's made a lot of tackles for Missouri today. They make the stop. Clock continues to move, 8.35, now less than that. Second down and six after the four-yard run by Harrion, the junior from Douglasville. And your big offensive line is beat up as it is. A couple of second-string guys in there right now answering the call to this point. 
We keep those three receivers out wide to the left. Dogs moving to our right as we view it. Play fake. Fromm's going to keep it. Fromm will run it down from the 30 to the 25, down to the 24, maybe the 23 and a half. Kale Garrett, the linebacker, got the hit on Fromm. So Fromm pulling one out of the playbook of Drew Locke just moments ago on a play fake and an 11-yard touchdown run. We've seen Fromm do that before, but the first time today he kept it and got positive yards to the 24-yard line. The gain was seven, and it's a first down for the Bulldogs. First and 10 on the Tiger 24-yard line. Great read right there by Fromm, pulling that out of the back or out of the belly of his of his back as they collapsed on him very, very quickly. Two tight end set. We bring Ridley in tight. Handoff Harriet. Brian runs behind Gilliard, the center, straight ahead. Gold shirt gets in there. Jordan Elliott to muck up the works at the 21 and a half or so. Harrion's gain is about three. And the clock continues to move. 7 22, 21, Georgia 40, Mizzou 29. DeAndre Swift back in the game now for Harrion and Holyfield. We're keeping those guys as fresh as we can here late in the ballgame. Swift will shift to Fromm's left over his left shoulder. We bring the tight end in on the left edge, hand it to DeAndre, trying to run off a block by Nauta. And bodies colliding at the 18-yard line. That's where Swift will go down. Three-yard gain, Lee and Garrett on the tackle for the guys in gold. Third down, five to go for the Dogs. Under seven minutes to play, fourth quarter. Crowd hasn't really thinned out a whole lot. It wasn't quite full today, but most of the folks are hanging around. This is an area where the Dogs have struggled this afternoon. Only two out of nine on third down. How important is this one? Dogs enter the Massey Ferguson red zone. Experience the compact utility tractors that will take you through the season strong. Third down and five. Fromm to throw to the left. His short hops. His intended target was Hardman. Miko went to the turf, tried to scoop it up off his shoe tops, but it wasn't a real good pass from Jake in the pocket. And that'll bring up fourth down. Clock stops with the incompletion. 6.14 to go. We'll bring on Hot Rod. He's wearing his silver bullets today on the road. Silver shoes, as he calls them, the silver bullets and the pink slippers that he wears at Sanford Stadium. Those are his names for them. Jake Camarda, the freshman punter, will be the holder at the 26-yard line. 36-yard try in front of the goalpost between the hash marks, kicking to the right. Give the dogs a little bit of breathing room. There's the snap, the placement. The kick is blocked. Kick is blocked. It'll bounce at the five and into the end zone and out the back line of the end zone. Missouri has blocked the field goal. Score remains 40 to 29. Oh, my goodness. Just a big push up front by Missouri. They were able to get a paw up there and block that one. Very much a football game here at Columbia. 6.08 to go, 40 to 29. Dogs lead Missouri by 11. It's not over yet. Fourth quarter finish coming up after this on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Coach Kirby Smart here. Today's broadcast is live from the Piedmont Healthcare Radio Booth. Fans, you're dedicated to your team, and Rocket Mortgage is dedicated to you because when it comes to buying a home, the right way should be the only way. Rocket Mortgage, proud mortgage partner of Georgia Athletics. They say Walter Palmore is the guy that blocked Rodrigo Blankenship's 36-yard field goal attempt to preserve an 11-point deficit for Missouri. Now they've got the ball at their own 20. And here they go as they begin work. Play fake by Locke. Quick throw to the tight end, Okui Boonham. We haven't been able to really cover that guy today. He hasn't broken away for a whole lot. And Georgia's got another injured player. The pass was complete, and the tackle down at the 32-yard line. And uh, trying to get a look and see who the injured player is. Can't quite see the number from this angle. They're still tending to the injured players. DeAndre Baker. Baker. DeAndre Baker. Well, the dogs can ill afford to lose that man. But he is sitting up now, and they were helping him to his feet. 
And he'll try to walk. He takes his helmet off, and he's walking off under his own power, mostly with the helmet off. They'll give him a quick check on the sidelines. Hopefully he's able to go back in. The dogs have already lost at least three starters today to injuries. Georgia Power brings the energy for every game day into your community, too. Visit georgiapower.com backslash sports to learn more. 6.01 to go in the ballgame. 40-29. to 29. It's a first down for Missouri at their own 32-yard line. So now Baker's out of the ballgame. Empty set. Lock looking, looking, throws, pass titted, uh, tipped at the line of scrimmage. Uh, as a, Who got that? Marshall? Trying to go to Jonathan Johnson. And David Marshall got a piece of it as the ball came sailing over the line of scrimmage. It'll be incomplete. Second down and 10 for the Tigers. That batted pass incompletion stops the clock at 546 in the fourth quarter. That's about number five on the day for him. Here's Locke with Crockett offset to his left. Locke looking to the right. Now comes back to the near side. Throws. Pass is caught by the big tight end. Okui Boonham and Baker okay and back in the ball game. DeAndre makes that tackle. Good to see him back on the field. And Okui Boonham pushed out of bounds by Baker at the 39-yard line. That's catch number nine for him on the afternoon. They are moving him all around this football field, getting him outside in the X and the Z positions, playing him in the slot, playing him in a traditional tight end uh, position, just trying to find every matchup they can find. And right now he's winning. They go empty set again. Tigers on third down and three to go. From their own 39-yard line. Locke with a hard count. Now they snap it. Here comes pressure. Throws over the middle. Pass is broken up around the 47-yard line by Mark Webb. Wanted to go to Okui Boonham again. Did we find somebody that can cover him finally as Webb broke in front on the ball and batted it away? It's incomplete and fourth down now for the Tigers. Fourth and three from the Missouri 39 with 5.05 to go. Dogs were showing pressure in the interior line. Backed out of that right at the snap of the football. Brought pressure off of the slot. Manned up across the board. Okui Boonham in the slot to the right. Watch out for him. Four receiver set. They bring a man in motion. Now moving back the other way. Lock on fourth and three from the 39. Back to pass. Looking, looking. Backpedaling. Slings it. Caught at the 41. Crockett, we catch him right there. Oh, it's going to be close. Let's see. It's going to depend on the spot. Tackled by DeAndre Baker. At around the 42. They're spotting it on this near sideline. I can't see where they put the ball down because of all the Missouri players there. And they're going to call for a measurement. Yeah, it looked like a favorable spot for Missouri. It looks like when we tackled him, I thought clearly we had stopped him. I'm with you on that. They had the digital down markers on this side uh, of the field, but the chains are on the far side, so they got to bring them all the way across from the Georgia sideline and extend the chains. And they're about to rip through the Missouri offense every, about every 10 yards or so they've got guys jumping over the chains Missouri's offense thinks they have the first down they're still out there now no Georgia cheering on the far side they stretch out the sticks and did not get the first down the dogs have stopped them Baker's tackle of Crockett left him shy of the first down so on fourth down the ball goes over to the dogs at the 41 yard line of Missouri so the dogs now with 4.58 to go in the contest, leading 40 to 29. We'll have the football on the Missouri 41 yard line. How about a look at our Nissan SAC update? It's brought to you by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now, the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. And DeAndre Walker's been in the backfield a lot today for Georgia. He's got both of the Bulldogs' sacks. Missouri has no sacks today. Georgia with two for a loss of 14 yards. And that is your Nissan sack update. Dogs lead by 11, and well, I'd like to see him get a little bit more just so you'd have a comfort zone, not just necessarily run out the clock. That's a lot of time to try to grind out at the 41-yard line. Yeah, it gets us. If they could get points, Z, that would certainly ice it. No question. Against this offense, you would think that this game is pretty much in hand, but the way Missouri can move the football and put points on the board, crazy things could happen. Let's just go ahead and take it into our own hands and ice it. 
Swift in the backfield. Hardman comes in motion across the formation. We hand it off to DeAndre. He's hit behind the line. By There's Nate Anderson again, who lists his hometown as Toronto, Ontario, but went to high school in Prattville, Alabama, and then attended junior college in New Mexico. He's been all over the country, and today he's all over the field, making stops left and right. He hit Swift for a one-yard loss back at the 42. Now the dogs will absolutely take their time and get the play clock down inside of five seconds before they snap the football. Missouri has one timeout remaining. 422 on the clock. It's moving. Second down, 11 from the Tiger 42-yard line. Dogs moving to the right. Hand off Swift. He got started and tripped up a little bit. I think he caught somebody's leg as he was trying to run and hit the hole behind Gilliard and Wilson on the right side. And Third and final charge timeout, Missouri. He falls down at the 42 and a half, so he lost a half a yard on that. And Missouri will call a time. That's their last one, as you heard Mark Curls, the referee. We'll call... Well, it might not seem like it, but Georgia's offense has rolled up 413 yards of total offense today. Missouri 393. The Dogs have rushed for 180. Missouri 172. Dogs have passed for 233. 221 for the Missouri Tigers. It's third down and 12 for the Dogs. We're on the Missouri 42-and-a-half yard line. 410 to go in the game. Snap to Fromm. He's looking to the left. Now he centers up, throws it down the near sideline, jumping in the air, making the catch. Ridley, did he get a foot down? Yeah! He got a foot down on the right sideline, on the near side at the 14 and a half. Unbelievable oh. effort right there, and a great pickup as well by Elijah Holyfield. Wow! Just saw the replay. The toe for the left foot. Oh, my goodness. That's a receiver right there. No question about it. Able to go up, get the football in its highest point, come down and somehow sneak a toe in there. Unbelievable. Wow. Impressive play by Riley Ridley to make the catch down at the 16-yard line as the Dogs jump into the Massey-Ferguson red zone once again. 27 yards on the pass completion from Fromm to Ridley. Hand off Holyfield. Bounces out left. 12, 11, 10, 9 goes low. They hit him low, and he went on top of him trying to drive through the defender. That's Demarcus Acey paid for his tackle at the 9-yard line. Good job staying in bounds, though. Dogs want to get one more first down, and well, I'd love to see some more points on the board, too. Six-yard pickup there by Holyfield. No doubt about that as we approach three minutes to go. 40 to 29. Dogs looking for more and looking to milk that clock. Go ahead and get this baby in the end zone. Fromm taking his time. Play clock at 10. Got everybody in order. Three receivers to the right. This is the wide side of the field to the right. Holyfield takes the football from Fromm. Looking for space behind Schaefer and Wilson. Not a whole lot of it there on the right side of the line of scrimmage. Brandon Lee leading the charge for the Missouri defense to make the tackle. No gain on the play at the nine. Clock continues to move. Missouri has no timeouts remaining. Dogs in all likelihood will be able to ice this ball game here. Leading by 11 with the ball on the Tiger nine and 2.15 to go and the clock moving. Brian Harrion has come into the ball game now. Dogs probably in two-down territory here, or four-down territory, excuse me. It's third and five right now. Miko in the wild dog takes the direct snap, looking for room, runs into his own man Mays in the backfield. Missouri had it defended pretty well. Hardman may have gotten a yard. Here comes a flag out of the pile now. He'll spot the ball on the eight, and here comes a flag. That'll stop the clock with 147. Hardman jumped in there into the wild dog, took the direct snap. And Mark Curls, our referee, will After explain the, the play, flag. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 77, offense. 15-yard penalty from the succeeding spot. The down counts. It's fourth down. That was number 77's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Big Cade Mays flag for the foul. 6'6", 320, freshman from Knoxville, Tennessee, who Georgia will be hosting next Saturday afternoon at Sanford Stadium, a 3.30 start. 3.39 will be the official kick time. 
says the television network. But that's where we will Under be next two week. minutes with a foul by the team ahead of the score. The opposing team can choose to have the clock started on the snap. The clock will start on my signal with the snap. 147. One of the new rules implemented for this year's season. And it looks like George is going to try a field goal here. Yeah, well, after the penalty, dogs, have, without the penalty, probably would have gone for it to try to get the first down and, and hopefully points. But now with the penalty, no choice except to kick the field goal. Try to go up 14, be a 40-yard try. Spotted on the 30, blanket ship on to kick. 40-yard try, kicking right between the hash marks. Not much of an angle. Snap, hold, kick goes away. In the air, reaching, and good. Splits the uprights. Hot rod does it to give the dogs a 14-point lead. It's 43-29, to 29, and that was another All-State good hands field goal by the Bulldogs to give Georgia a two-touchdown lead with 101 seconds remaining here in this difficult SEC East Challenge in Columbia today. Uh, it has been quite the battle. Missouri much improved from last year. They've been on uh, quite a run, nine consecutive regular season victories. And this football team, you can tell defensively, much improved. Uh, dogs, 43 points. Two of those are two of those not offensive touchdowns, though. One defensive t- touchdown, and then the block punt, scoop and score. It's been a struggle for a large part of the afternoon. And then on the offensive side of the ball, once this Missouri offense got rolling, uh, you take away some of the self-inflicted wounds and the turnovers that they had. They've been tough to stop. Blankenship's 40-yarder, Z, uh, uh, ended a, uh, an 18-yard drive in seven plays. And that's your Georgia Medals drive summary. From a doghouse to a dog's house, Georgia Medals has got you covered. And now Rod will kick it off. Tyler Beatty back deep with 141 remaining on the clock. 43 to 29, Georgia. Kick is in the air, sailing towards the end zone and over the head of the receiver, Beatty. It'll bounce eight and a half yards deep for the touchback. And Missouri will go at it again. No timeouts remaining for the Tigers, and they're down 14 points. There's been blocked punt returned by Georgia for a score, a blocked field goal by Missouri today, and an inter, uh, intercept, no, a fumble recovery, a scoop and score, if you will, by Tyler Campbell early in the ball game, the first points of the afternoon. He stripped Okui Boonham, picked it up off the bounce, and ran 50-something yards down the far sideline for the score. We've had a little bit of everything today, and not necessarily shining performances by marquee players. Here's Locke will throw. The pass is a little bit low, and it's dropped by Beatty, incomplete. He was trying to reach down below his knees to reel in that pass, but he dropped it on the turf at the 31. So the incompletion stops the clock with 136. It'll be second and 10, Missouri, from their 25. Dogs rushing three and a two-cloud coverage. So three defenders about 20 yards, 25 yards deep. Lock with time. Will throw it high this time. Juggled and caught, I think. No incomplete on the tackle. Beatty again trying to reel in that ball. Grant wiped him out on the far side, forced the incompletion. Beatty was juggling it, trying to catch it, and that's when Walter hit him pretty good, drove him to the turf, and he dropped it. It's third and 10 from the 25. Clock stops with that incompletion. 129 to go. Locke waits for the snap. Three-man rush by Georgia. Block with time. Rifles one to the left side of the field. Again, the pass. Maybe Locke's getting a little bit tired. His passes are low and high. They're all over the place. So Cooley Bonham couldn't reach down and scoop that one up on a low pass that was sizzling in below his knees around the 32-yard line. And it's fourth down and 10 now for the Tigers from their 25. And they'll keep the offense out there. 124 remaining. Klopp stopped with that incompletion. Yeah, 47 attempts on the afternoon for Drew Locke. 23 completions. On fourth and 10, is he going to survive pressure? He will. He'll throw it, and it'll sail over the target. Jonathan Johnson at the 35 and land incomplete at the 45. McGee in coverage for Georgia. And the Dogs can start looking ahead to Tennessee next week with 118 to go. They'll get the ball back, taking over on downs at the 25. Missouri cannot stop the clock. Georgia leads it 43-29. to 29. A couple of knees, and... 
we'll hit the bus and head to the airport. Well, not the greatest of performances for the Georgia Bulldogs. It's been a while since we've not seen us play at our peak levels, but still plenty good enough to get an SEC road win against a, a much improved, very solid Missouri team. Georgia will go to 4-0 and as Fromm takes the snap and takes a knee at the 27. They'll go to 4-0 all time here at Faroe Field in Columbia, Missouri. They've never lost here since Missouri entered uh, the Southeastern Conference, and they'll improve to 7-1 and all time against the Tigers in the series history. The last team to beat Missouri in the regular season was Georgia in Athens last year, and they come to Missouri and repeat the process. 50 seconds to go. Dogs will let the play clock and the game clock tick away a, a little bit more before taking a snap, and Fromm will take another knee when it gets under 40 seconds. And then that'll be the last snap of the ball game, and Georgia will walk out of here with a victory. There's the snap. There's the knee. There's the whistle. And there's your ball game. 30 seconds to go, but the players will walk onto the field to shake hands. The coaches will meet in the middle of the field for a quick handshake and a quick word. Kirby Smart for Georgia. Barry Odom for Missouri. And the Dogs have their fourth consecutive win. Number two, Georgia, comes to Missouri and grinds out a 14-point victory. Your final today from Faroe Field on a sunny afternoon in middle Missouri. Georgia 43, Missouri 29. Now stay tuned for our post-game coverage. That's coming up next right here on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network.